Appalachian State comes into today's game off an impressive 24-7 win over Georgia Southern. Led by SoCon total offensive leader, quarterback Richie Williams. Wofford will be bringing the pressure with senior nose tackle Caden Bethay. It's the Mountaineers and the Terriers next on CSS. Welcome to Spartanburg, South Carolina. It's Southern Conference football today. The Wofford Terriers host the Appalachian State Mountaineers. Tom Wormy, along with Walt Nadzak. And Walt, this place is a difficult place for opponents to win. Wofford has won 17 of its last 18 games here at Gibbs Stadium. And 4-0 this year. And they, when they're at home, they usually win. For App State, you talk about the ground game, and it's Kevin Richardson. He is the leader in all-purpose yardage in the Southern Conference. 5'9", 190 pounds out of Elizabethtown, uh, North Carolina. 208 yards against a very good Georgia Southern team last week. And how about the quarterback for Wofford, Josh Collier? Now, he does not put up impressive numbers, but he has directed this team to a solid 4-2 and two record. He makes very few mistakes. Last week he was 5 for 6 for 40 yards, not throwing long, but percentage passing. 11 carries for 61 yards, a good quarterback. All right, Walt, it's Southern Conference football here on CSS. App State and Wofford go head to head for first place in the conference. It's all coming up next here on CSS. Like Gibbs Stadium in Spartanburg, South Carolina. It's Southern Conference football here on CSS, and this is a big game today as the two teams fight for the top spot in the Southern Conference, both teams with two and one records. The coaching matchup today, and we'll start with the Wofford head coach, Mike Ayers, all-time winningest coach at Wofford, 114-82-1 in his 18th season, Walt. Mike's brought this program a long way, starting when he came here with a Division II program. He's not only made them competitive in 1AA, they're one of the best 1AA programs in the country. And let me tell you, he does it right. He recruits well, he has good students, and he's done a great job here. Across the field, the head coach for App State is Jerry Moore. He is the winningest coach in Southern Conference history and App State history, a 133-65 total record and 6-2 and against Wofford. Well, it's like looking in the mirror with Mike Ayers as far as longevity in this league. They're two of the oldest coaches in the league. Jerry's uh, got a little spring in his step this year <laughs> running a no-huddle offense. Very successful. He's changed the offense to suit uh, what's happening in today's football. 17th season overall for Jerry Moore. Here's the series history. Appalachian State leads it 12-9. to And in 2004, the Terriers beaten on the road against the Mountaineers 38 to 17 and App State has won the last eight of ten matchups but two of three have been won by Wofford. Here's our weather conditions today. Beautiful day for football. 76 degrees. The wind westerly 10 to 15 knots. Forecast partly cloudy. We had a bit of fog and drizzle early on but that is all burned off and it's a beautiful day for football. The final home game of the season quite unusual. It's already the final home game of the season for Wofford. Well, it's tough for Wofford to finish on the road because they're so successful at home. You know as you mentioned earlier 17 out of 18 and what you didn't realize they've won nine straight games in October in the last three years. And that only loss came in the last game of the season last year against Furman. Otherwise they've won 17 of 18 on the turf here at Gibbs Stadium. We're just about set to kick it away. Number 31, Chris Tommy will knock it away for Wofford as we get started. The Terriers and the Mountaineers. Southern Conference football here from Gibbs Stadium in Spartanburg, South Carolina on the campus of Wofford College. Wofford in the black, Appalachian State in the white. Tommy set to kick it away. Takes a hop and rolls into the end zone. Jermaine Little will down it in the end zone. And Appalachian State will operate first and 10 from the 20. Take a look at the starting lineups. The Mountaineer offense, Oliver Brown, Suttle, Robertson, and Eisenhower up front. Bettis, the tight end. Johnson, Turner, and Little, the wide receivers. Kevin Richardson is the running back, number 28. 
And you're going to see a no huddle offense out of Appalachian when they come out. This the last time you see them huddle was on the sidelines coming out here, and they're not going to huddle again. The starting quarterback is Richie Williams. He has broken and destroyed the Appalachian State record book. He holds just about every single record. In fact, if I started talking now listing them, I might not finish them by the time the game is over. Williams gets it away. That's complete down the sideline. That's little. Still on his feet across the 40 and up to about the 43. Great way to start for the Mountaineers. They had an unbalanced offensive formation. They had four receivers here to the short side. He started, he started to look inside and threw it in the flat. Little exploding down the sideline, and that's a big pickup there. First and 10 from the 43 for the Mountaineers. Now, Coach Moore told me yesterday this is the quickest team he's had, and that first play sure indicated that. 23-yard pickup on the first play from scrimmage for App State. Here's the handoff. Not much there for Richardson. Excellent. Take a look at the defensive lineup. Marcus Morell, Omar Byram, Joe Suter, and Jason Hunter is the right end. West, Kelly, and Smith, the backers. Smith is the bandit. Appalachian got away. Got away with some motion back uh, into the ball going forward. Uh, the official missed that. So second and about nine. Williams operates from the shotgun. Let's it go. And it's complete. Number 80 is Daniel Bettis, the tight end. And Bettis picks up a first down. Let's take a look at the Wofford defense now, trying to stop this high-powered App State offense. Up front, Hutchinson, Bethay, and Schaefer. The backers, Newbury, Thurman, Franklin, and Leventis. And in the secondary, Stucky Ford, Tavani, and Alex Love, who also does it on special teams. Love has blocked six punts. Well, so far, they're running away from uh, Katon Bethay. He's not going to have a good game if they keep going outside. They're staying away from him. First down in Wofford territory for App State. Football in the 44. Williams dumps it off inside. This is Richardson. Across the 40 and brought down. Little inside screen there, Tom. Solid pickup of about seven. Now you'll see Richardson run, catch the ball. He was the Southern Conference Offensive Player of the Week last week. 208 yards rushing a career high against Georgia, Georgia Southern in that victory. They've run more offensive formations than Wofford's run in two years. <laughs> and they were in the first series. That's the 27th catch of the season for Richardson. Averaging just under 10 yards per catch. This time he'll give it off. Richardson has a first down and more. Inside the 30, dives inside the 25 to the 22. First down for the Mountaineers. He's got some quickness. He's got some quickness and he changes direction on a dime. It looks like and this field is in great shape. So it's not like the Notre Dame field with Southern Cal last week where the grass was four or five inches high. If you were hitting balls off of this grass, you'd have a good lie for no, every single no shot. No bad lies. You could hit any <laughs> club in your bag. No rough on this field. First down from the 24 for Rap State. Richie Williams has thrown for over 1,200 yards this season, but this time he'll keep it and scamper out of bounds. Pick up of six for Williams. Little quarterback misdirection play there, Tom. Jesus. Williams averaging 5.6 yards per rush and picked up about that much right there with 12.16 to go here in the first quarter. Richie Williams needs just 120 yards to become the fourth player in Southern Conference history to get 7,500 yards in total offense. Absolutely incredible. And we'll document his record-breaking performances as we go through the afternoon. They'll run up the middle very close to a first down. They're spreading the, the Wofford defense with these formations, and Wofford has, hasn't settled down yet and hasn't made the adjustments, but I think they will as time goes on. Right now, with this no-huddle offense, they don't get a chance to hot huddle defensively and get the signals from the sidelines and make the proper adjustments. But they'll, I think they'll do better as time goes on. Third and short for the Mountaineers. Ball spotted on the 15. Richardson. It's going to be very, very close. 
Jim Thurman, number 55, the linebacker for Wofford, indicating that he was short. And from that spot, it looks like he is. He got stuffed, and I think it was uh, Bethay again inside that, that was in on that hit. Caden Bethay came into the game with 34 tackles, five sacks to lead the team and the conference. Had four last week against VMI alone. Fourth and short. Well, they have four seconds on the delay of game clock. I don't know if he got that on a quarterback sneak. Boy, that is awfully close. Williams tried to get it, forging forward, and it's going to depend on the spot of the marker. I think he's getting a good mark from the linesman up top. Well, Williams thinks he's got it. We have a replay on that. I'd like to see that. That's an awful close play. He might have it by the nose of the football. Jerry Moore very interested in this spot. And he did, in fact, get it by the nose of the football, as predicted by Walt. I can still see that. <laughs> Incredible vision. That was over the top of my glasses, too. I didn't even look through my glasses. <laughs> Well, that's a tough break for Wofford. They, they, they did a great job down there. Those are the kind of spots you like as a oh, coach. Yeah. Of course, Walt at trip. the University of Connecticut. Yeah. Got trips to the left here. And we've got flags all I, over the I field. I think Appalachian moved. We'll wait for the indication from the official. We're in the first quarter, 10.49 to go. The Mountaineers with the ball. Offside. Defense, number 92 with contact. Oh, that was wrong there. Five yard penalty, still first down. The call from Riley Johnson goes against Wofford, so it'll be first and five. So at the ball just inside the 10 yard line. Just think of all the signals the uh, Richie Williams has to read from the sidelines with the no huddle, and then he has to make adjustments on the line as well. It takes a mature quarterback to do that. Williams with seven touchdown passes trips, this season. Trips to the left. Williams runs down to about the two. That'll be a first and goal situation for the Mountaineers. Williams sold the pass and then took off. That quarterback draw and, and uh, talked to Jerry Moore the other day. Scott Suttle, the center, he said is one of his best football players, and he did a great job blocking on uh, Bethay in the middle there. This is the 11th play of the opening drive for the Mountaineers. Started at their own 20. They're down to the Wofford two-yard line. And five minutes is eaten off that clock. Uh, this is going to be a, a quick game if this keeps up. We approach the 10-minute mark. Richardson goes airborne and is into the end zone. Top. Appalachian State takes the lead on the Richardson touchdown run from three yards out. I wonder if he high jumps on the track team. He went over that pile and then landed on his feet in the end zone. Kevin Richardson is eighth touchdown of the season. There he goes on the replay. He's going to just hurdle over the top and watch him come down the, on his feet. Great balance. Julian Rausch out for the extra point. And it is good. So with 9.59 to go in the first quarter, Appalachian State strikes first. It leads 7 to nothing over Wofford. You're watching Southern Conference football on CSS. Welcome back to Gibbs Stadium on the campus of Wofford College. In the first quarter with 9.59 to go, Appalachian State strikes first. 7 nothing on the touchdown run from Kevin Richardson. 11 plays, 80 yards. They took five minutes and one second off the clock. Richardson with his eighth touchdown run of the season. On the kickoff, the ball goes out of bounds. That was, that was almost a classic mistake. That ball would, could have been on a one-yard line. Free ball right there, and it did go out of bounds. Time for your Carolina Fords. Starting lineups for the Terrier offense. Olmstead, Tiller, McKenna, Bauer, and Hodap up front. Garland's the tight end. Wood the receiver. The running backs are Dunn, Dunn, Young, and Jackson. And the quarterback is Josh Collier. Not enormous numbers, but again, they have a solid 4-2 and two record, and Collier led them to a victory over Georgia Southern when it was ranked in the nation in 1AA. So here's the first offensive set for Wofford. 
Call your number 12 under center. They'll go to the ground. Adrian Young, number six, with the first run of the ball game, and he picks up a solid six yards. If that's any indication, uh, they're going to miss Michael Hobbs, but that was a, a great hit he delivered on that safety man. Time for the Carolina Ford defensive setup. Morell, Byram, Suter, and Hunter. West, Kelly, and Smith, the backers, Smith, the bandit. Woza, Touchstone, Wiggins, and Lynch in the secondary. Second and four for Wofford. And they'll run it again. Gabriel Jackson, and he's dropped. This is what Wofford doesn't want, third and long, Tom. Ninety-seven on the play, Jason Hunter. Third and long gets Wofford out of sync with the passing game and the, and the running game. They like to, to grind it out. And the third and long is not a good passing situation for Josh Collier. Collier has only attempted 62 passes and completed 25 the entire season. And now they come up against third and eight. Well, they come a little. The pitch. Jackson scampers forward. And they'll get the first down. What a great effort there. What a great effort. Gabriel Jackson, 5'9", 185, the senior from Delongia, Georgia, made a great play here to get that first down on third and eight. On, a, on the option left, they, they don't like to throw on third and ten. I mean, that's not part of uh, Mike Gare's game plan. Well executed option play. First and ten for the Terriers from the 32. From the shotgun, Collier. Throws complete. 86 is Cody Garland. But that's Garland will only get one or two on that play. Now that's going to mess me up. He threw on first down and short, but he only got three yards. But still, that's a good play. They dragged the tight end across the middle. Percentage pass. Just to loosen those linebackers up for Appalachian so they can't come screaming in there on the option. Wofford is going to have to mix it up a little bit. They lost their top running back, Michael Hobbs, a sophomore. Broken right ankle against VMI last week. He was their top rusher with 518 yards in six games played and six touchdowns. The thing that uh, talking to Coach Ayers that he, he thought it might hurt, he might hurt them getting out on the perimeter with the with, uh, Appalachian not respecting uh, the running because Hobbs is at. They would like to get on the on the perimeter with the option. Another third down situation for the Terriers. They call it third and four from their own 38. 725 remaining here in the first quarter. The crowd's getting into this one, Tom. This is the final home game of the season for Walker. The last chance to see the Terriers try to pull off a victory. It would be their fifth in a row at home. They're going to get a first down. Gabriel Jackson gets it done up across the 45 to the 46. That was no option. That, that, that was uh, just an off tackle play that Jerry Moore liked to run at, at Appalachian. <laughs> These guys are the two gray beards of this league and they're two of the best coaches around. I'll probably hear from both of them for calling them gray beards. Gabriel Jackson, 41 rushes, 326 yards, averaging eight yards per rush, and he's got a touchdown, and he had a great first down effort there to keep this drive going for the Wofford Terriers. This is, this is spread formation, no wing bone. Call you right up the middle, met immediately. He saw a little split in the defense there, Tom. He thought he could get away with that. Might have been just on the, uh, on the go by himself in the center. That was Cam Spear, number 27 from Monroe, North Carolina, right up the middle to flush that play out. And we lost the hat in the process as well. Heavy hitting out there. These two bookends, Jason Hunter and Marquez Morrell, are, are excellent defensive ends. Morrell first in the Southern Conference with six and a half sacks this season. Call you the pitch. This is Jackson, across the 50. That'll bring up third and six for Wofford. Now, what will they do? What's the prediction on the play, Coach? I'll tell you, Morrell made a great play there fighting off the block. But now it's third and six. Well, after, after what Mike's done the first series so far, I don't know if he's going to throw it or run it. The all-time winningest coach in the history of Wofford College. 114 victories in his 18th season. He's two and six against App State. He's also been coach of the year in the Southern Conference five times. A little modified wing bone with motion here. 34 is Corey Dunn, and he's going nowhere. 
I thought maybe he'd pull that out and continue down the line, but he didn't. Cam Spear comes out of the pile once again. There he is, 27, making another stop on this drive. And Jason Hunter again, also 97 in on the, on the drive. Fourth down, they're going to... Whether this is trying to draw them offside, it's not enough for a first down. From the F State 49, a little quick kick. I wanted to comment on that. I watched this in practice yesterday. And an excellent call as the ball rolls dead inside the 10. They'll spot it at the 9. First and 10 for App State. When we come back, the Mountaineers lead the Terriers 7-0 from Gibbs Stadium. It's Southern Conference football here on CSS. In an ideal world, in the first quarter here from Wofford College, 4.49 to go, and App State leads Wofford 7 to nothing. Tennessee's won nine of its last ten meetings against SEC rival Alabama, but is the tide turning? Alabama 6-0 for the first time since 1996, and 4-0 in SEC play. Catch an SEC showdown between the Volunteers and the Crimson Tide, Sunday at 4 and Monday at 8, only on CSS. And here in Spartanburg, South Carolina, 7-0. App State with the lead and the ball. The quick kick by Josh Collier. And the Mountaineers will start from their own nine. Richie Williams from the shotgun will hand off. And Richardson gets nowhere. Stacked up by a horde of Wofford defenders. Look for a repeat of that play. This, they ran it earlier. He's going to pull that out of the stomach. Uh, and then he's going to run outside in a naked option here. Not a naked option, just a naked run. Richie Williams is 6'3", 190, the senior from Camden, South Carolina. Watched his head there. He was looking inside to see who bit on that handoff to see if he could keep it and pull it out. Second and nine for App State. Complete. 80 is Bettis. And that is very close to a first down. Well, Appalachian's got so much speed. These defensive backs for Wofford have to play a little loose to so get beat deep. And they're giving up an 8 to 10 yard cushion. That, that's an easy throw. Third and one. 345 to go in the first quarter. Williams looking to the sideline. So yep, for the signals. He, as he looked at the defense, then he looked at the sideline for the change. Over the middle, incomplete, intended for Bettis. That'll bring up fourth and one. That's a surprising call, throwing the ball down there with one yard, the way they've been moving the football. That's highly questionable. You've got Williams and Richardson both in the backfield who can easily get you one yard, you would think. Well, that's where the people in the stands and the fans at home say, what are we doing? But these guys know more than we do. They see them every day. They saw something they liked. 99, Matt Dodge on to punt from his own four-yard line for App State. Where's Alex Love? Gets it away cleanly. Brandon Berry across the 40. Berry. He's got some room. A He's got a lot of room. And finally forced out of bounds. Brandon Berry with the return for Wofford. Excellent field position for their second possession of the game. Berry showed great speed there, great quickness. He got some key blocks as well. And there's not a flag on the play. I was looking at, you know, in pro football anymore, all you see is flags on kicks. He's got a little escort there, but he's going to run out of room pretty soon right there. First and 10 for Wofford from the 35, just over three minutes to go in the first quarter. And App State has the 7-0 lead, scoring on its first drive of the ball game. Great field position. Adrian Young finally wrestled to the turf. They're definitely in four-down territory for uh, Coach Ayers and the, and the Wofford uh, Terriers here. Second and seven from the 32 for Wofford. Josh Collier, the quarterback from Bonaire, Georgia, 6'2", 195, the sophomore. Collier zips it. It's complete. 
He gets a good spot here. He's got a first down right on the sticks at the 25. Colby Harris made the catch. It's like just a little curl pattern to the outside, but he, the intelligent thing, he ran it deep enough to get the first down. First and 10 from the 24 for Wofford. Young puts his head down and barrels ahead. Adrian Young, 5'11", 200, using it all on that run. Well, you see that leg drive. Watch this on the replay and look at the leg drive coming in. This is a great, what great backs do. Watch his legs. He just keeps chugging. Took four or five guys to finally bring him down. Second and short, call it second and three from the 17. Under two minutes here of the first quarter. Young again. Tell you what, Stumbles we're, down at the 15. We we're lucky to not fumble that, that football. They were a little out of, out of uh, sync right there. Brings looks up like third and short. Third and one, looks like. They have two downs to make this because Mike Harris is not going to kick it. He's going to go with one yard. Wofford played in the national semifinals in 2003 under Mike Ayers, and it's third and short. And they get it. Collier takes care of business. Watch this. It's a little inside quarterback counter. It's a typical wishbone play that Charlie Taft used to run years ago at the Citadel. And Mike Ayers has been running that play for just as long. Great execution. First and goal for Wofford. Spot the ball on the eight yard line. Collier dancing his way down to about the six. A little quarterback draw there as well, but Upstate's read, read that pretty well. Keep an eye on the total rushing yardage for Wofford today. They've won 30 consecutive games when they rush for 300 or more yards as a team. And, and when they don't, they don't, usually don't win. That's their M.O. Second and goal from the six. Call your pitch. Jackson to the end zone. Touchdown, Terriers. The good thing about that for Wofford is they ran that option into the short side. Appalachian was overplaying the wide side of the field. Gabriel Jackson, his second rushing touchdown of the season. Nick Robinson in to attempt the extra point and knock this game up at seven. And it's good, a six yard TD run for Gabriel Jackson and we're tied at seven. Southern Conference football here on CSS. The Terriers and the Mountaineers even up at seven with 20 seconds to go in the first. Back in Spartanburg, South Carolina, we've got an even ball game. 7-7, seven, seven, Wofford at App State. The scoring drive for the Terriers, seven plays, 35 yards, took up two minutes and 49 seconds. Jackson with a six-yard run, and we're tied up at seven. Chris Tommy boots it away. Oh, Squibber came right up to him, though. Scooped up by Jackson. Dexter Jackson out to about the 27. First and 10 for the Mountaineers. Looks like Jackson just missed that opening. It was there. You know, sometimes, Tom, when, it opened, when the game opened, Appalachian went right down the field and scored a little bit too easy. And you get a little, you don't mean to, but you just get a little lax. A little overconfident, and maybe? When, when you score that, you know, easy in the first drive. First down for Richie Williams uh, and the Mountaineers. That, they can't do that. Both tackles were in a, in a, well, they were in a two-point stance. The throw over the middle complete. 82 Jermaine Little across midfield. Little inside the 40. Little finally dragged down at the 12. 
Williams to Little, deep into Wofford territory. Oh, crossing pattern, great throw, great catch, great speed. End of the first quarter. Comes on the crossing pattern, right there. Jermaine Little, tremendous catch and run for the senior from Miami. You gotta give credit to uh, the Wofford player that didn't catch his number there on the replay that made the tackle, saved the touchdown. We'll check it on the way back, 7-7 after the first period. More to come here on CSS, Wofford and App State. By the Room, the amazing home furnishing store on the Carpets of Dalton campus offers you this special invitation to visit the grand opening of our signature design gallery. Today's game is brought to you by Carolina Ford, driving the Carolinas. BB&T, you can tell we want your business. And Food Lion, extra low prices. We start the second quarter all tied up at seven, but App State deep in Wofford territory, spot the ball at the 11, first and 10. They can get a first down after that 62-yard connection between Williams and Jermaine Little. They got trips to the wide side of the field here, and one-on-one -on -one down here at the bottom. Williams takes off to the five, and he dives inside the five to the four. Richie Williams is the, the only quarterback in Southern Conference history who has rushed for over 1,100 yards and thrown for over 6,000 yards. An incredible stat. And he's got three or four games to go. Richie Williams is fourth in Southern Conference history for total offense. He's the App State all-time leader in total offense. Listen to this number, 7,000 yards. Over 7,000 yards for him. Just incredible as they get closer and closer to the goal line. It's from Boone, North Carolina to Atlantic City, I think. <laughs> That's a long trip. Kevin Richardson with another carry for the Mountaineers. And another third down and short. Third and short, and they can get a first down right on about the one-yard line. And you see Williams orchestrating the offense, and that's exactly what he does. Pointing and gesturing, and Richardson up the middle. Touchdown. Kevin Richardson, his second touchdown run of the ballgame. And, ball. and they made that look pretty easy. Went in there untouched. Look at the blocking, great blocking. Kevin Richardson runs low down there, too, in traffic. Doesn't give you much of a target. Richardson's ninth touchdown carry of the season. And now Julian Rausch will come on to try to tack on the extra point. High snap, down, and good. He got it down. 14 to 7, App State leads it. 13, 41 to go in the game. Kevin, or go in the second quarter, rather. Kevin Richardson with his second touchdown run for App State. 13.41 to go in the second quarter. App State with a 14-7 lead over Wofford. Talking football, it's a new name, new time, same great show. Catch Danny Sheridan on Talking Football. Sundays at 7, only on CSS, your source for Southeast sports. App State set to kick it off. 91, Julian Rausch boots it away. That'll go into the end zone. And Touchback, first and 10 from the 20 for Wofford. Trying to respond to that impressive drive put together by App State. They rifled down the field. Only took them a minute and 39 seconds to get their second touchdown of the ball game. Well, that pass and catch and run really uh, set that up. Jermaine Little, a 62-yard catch off the arm of Richie Williams. Williams. Leading his team to a 14-7 lead. Here comes Josh Collier and the Wofford Terrier offense. Inside counter play, well done. Corey Dunn across the 30. Dragged down to the secondary. 
Jerome Touchstone finally brought him down around the ankles, but not before a first down for Wofford. Joe Suter and uh, Omar Bryan were a little quick to get, get out of their defensive lanes there, and the counter hurt them. Take a look at Corey Dunn's numbers, 62 rushes, 365 yards, averaging just under six per ball game, but with three TDs, and that pass is incomplete. Looking for Cody Garland, the tight end. Ball was a little high. He needs to put, he needs to put his hands together on that, though. He's got to catch that ball. That could have been tipped and intercepted very easily. Second and 10 from 32 for Wofford. In the black, half state in the white. Final home game of the season for the Wofford Terriers. Something a little different there in a typical pro I formation. Call your rolls. Tucks. And ridden out of bounds. 47, Corey Lynch finally forced him out. Well, you got to attribute that to coverage of uh, Jason Waza was super on the outside. Gave that receiver no room. Good fake inside, continue the rollout, but the coverage was very good down, downfield. Another third and four, third and five situation here. From the 38 yard line for the Terriers. Collier with the pitch. Jackson. Very close. Jackson will be well short of the first down. Great defensive stop. They got a lot of field to run to here. We run the typical wing bone option. I guarantee you that Coach Harris is going to go for this if it's close. He's not going to punt the ball away. I take that back. He's going <laughs> to punt the ball away. Well, it's not as close as it looked for originally. I was looking at the yards to gain sticker here instead of the first down marker. The line the of scrimmage, side. yes. Roush punts it away. Oh. That ball was loose. The wrong end of that football turned up. It, it did a reverse and bounced backwards. You get a good punt, the nose goes down, but the nose went up in the air, and it, when that hits, it, come, it usually comes backwards. Unfortunate break for Wofford. That's a bad break. The ball's in great field position for Appalachian. They'll start first and 10 from the 39 and come right out and get ready to play. The no huddle offense employed by App State and Richie Williams has run it to perfection this season and offensively throughout his career. Uh, Jermaine Little's out here in the slot and there's nobody within eight yards of him. Six on the play clock. They get it away. Williams a quick throw complete. Dexter Jackson. That was good coverage, too. Great throw. Good coverage, good catch. Just a little crossing pattern. Wofford's having trouble matching up with some of these receivers. Richie Williams today, six completions of seven attempts, 119 yards. He's just one yard away from 7,500 total offense for his career at App State. Richardson cross midfield into Wofford territory first down for the first Mountaineers. Down. Wofford needs a, a change of game thing. They need a turnover. They need something good to happen right now. Well, they pull the tackle. The quickness of Appalachian State is impressive. Richardson with nine carries. 26 yards and two touchdowns this afternoon. They swing it out. 82 is Jermaine Little down the sidelines and forced out of bounds. See the key but to not that. before a big game. You see the key that two Wofford defensive backs were on the ground, but blocked on the ground. And when that happens, you've got a big play right here. Watch it coming right. There's one and you can't see the other one, but they're down on the ground. Wofford's really having trouble with formations and coverages right now. App State continues to mix it up. 
Williams at the controls. He's gone over 7,500 yards in total offense for his career. Only the fourth player in Southern Conference history to do so. Williams, the inside pitch. Dexter Jackson met immediately. That play didn't look good from the start. They were a little bunched up, and, and Wofford got some penetration. Caden Bethay came in and made the stop. See, they've kind of taken Bethay out of the game by not running inside very much. And when they do, he's there because he's a good football player. Probably won't see that play again to that this afternoon. <laughs> I don't think we're going to see that one for a while. That one in the trash yeah. for you head coach what? Moore. Most of their runs are from the tackle outside. Second and 11 from the 31 of Wofford. Just over 11 minutes to go in the half. 14 7. Half state with the lead. Williams with the ball. Lofts it up. I think he's out of bounds. He on is that being ruled out of bounds. TJ Corman made the catch but was out of bounds when he had possession. What well, Appalachian is doing is using formations to get one man uh, free and not quite enough coverage. But that pass right there just shows you the confidence of Williams. Oh, he yeah. thinks he can thread a needle he from it. 20 he, yards away. You see him flick that thing out there. Let's... And he almost pulled it off. Now look at the coverage up top. That's an eight, eight. Well, he's walking up now, but there's nobody within eight yards of the slot. And that's trouble. Third and 11. Williams to pass. Richardson. Cut down. 55. Jim Thurman made the stop. That'll bring up four. Tell you what, that's a good play by Thurman. Jim Thurman had it red and dropped Richardson. And he's normally an inside linebacker playing out over the tackle and, and has coverage in the flat. So he's got to be able to run. So with 10.27 to go in the second quarter, fourth, fourth and seven, and they will go for it. And they have four receivers to the wide side of the field, and Wofford only has two and a half men out there. If he breaks contain out there to the left. Williams to the end zone, wide open. Dexter Jackson, but he's out of bounds. Jackson made wow. the catch, but could not wow. get a foot in bounds. Just lofted it a little high. And Walt, the We're funny coming. thing is they had the four receivers to the far side, their one receiver to the near yeah. side, wide open in the end. And Wofford was short a man to the to the wide side. But I'd like to see the total. He's out. Jackson he has did he, not get the foot down. He has to come down inbounds. 10 04 to go here in the second quarter. 14 to 7. App State with the lead. App State up 14-7, and Walt, look how close this play was, the catch from Dexter Jackson. Throw the red flag and look at it on replay. But we don't have replay here. It looks like the right foot may have been down, nonetheless, first and 10, the other direction for Wofford. But if it was, I don't know if the ball was over the end zone yet, over the end line. As and take one more look at it. Now watch the right foot of Dexter Jackson. Look at right, it's so close. But does he have full possession? Oh no, my he, goodness. He definitely doesn't out of the back of the end zone. But did he have a foot down? The officials ruled he did not. Call your keeps and cannot escape the grasp inside. That's a little quarterback inside counter. I need three yards. It'll be third and short for Wofford. I guarantee you, Coach Mike Ayers is not going to punt the ball away. He's got two downs to make a yard, and I guarantee he's going to use them. Can't give the ball back to Appalachian. They're moving it too well. Wofford three for five on third down conversions. Another one here with the ball at the 36. The pitch. Jackson. First down. Jackson would not be denied. Oh, there's no question they were going to go for that. And a good play because Appalachian was, was beefed up inside looking for a, a sneak or a drive play. It was Jackson against Corey Lynch. And Jackson wins that battle to get the first down at the 39 for Wofford. I'd like to see if Michael Hobbs were playing because these backs, these young backs for Wofford are not that bad. Again, Michael Hobbs, the leading rusher for Wofford, the sophomore fullback, a broken ankle last week against VMI. 
another eye formation here, Tom. This is a, not one of their favorite formations. They'll go right up the middle. Keep it on the ground. They're going to try to ground it out, run some clock, and keep Appalachian's offense on the sidelines over there. Eight and a half minutes to go in the second quarter. Second and seven from the 42. Appalachian stayed in that four-man front most of the time so far. But Jason Hunter at one end and Morrell at the other are two good bookends. And then you got Corey Lynch in the middle back there. It's quite a triangle. Collier to the air. Incomplete. Looking for Aaron Johnson just a bit too high. He was just a little late throwing the ball. He was open sooner. He just didn't get turned around to, and plan himself to throw the ball there at on time. Third and seven for Wofford. And what will they do here? Well, normal team would be a passing down, but we don't know right you now. You just never know. This is a typical wing bone formation with the unbalanced down here to the left. Pitch to Jackson. Can't get around the corner. Marcus Morrell was the first man to make contact, and Jackson stopped short on third down. And there's that team speed that, that uh, Coach Jerry Moore was telling me about yesterday. Look at Morrell run. I mean, he's all over the place. Tough, tough. And hard to handle when you got speed like that. Marcus Morrell from Fayetteville, North Carolina, number 44, his teammate. 27, Cam Spear having a great ball game on defense. Wofford forced the punt away. They got this one turned over the right way. That's Jackson. On the 11 and down. And he's dropped. <laughs> Wofford's got to play some defense now. They settle down and, and get to force a punt or a turnover here. Alex Love, the quarterback, made the play on special teams. And dropped Jackson at the 11. So App State with 7.24 to go in the second quarter and a 14-7 lead. Takes over deep in its own territory. Head coach Jerry Moore is 17th season at App State. The winningest coach in Southern Conference history. Hey, Appalachian's <laughs> formations have, have forced Wofford to do some things they probably aren't used to doing and don't like to do on defense. Williams. And now he goes back the other direction. Oh, my. He's got a blocker. Hops over the 20. And down at about the 27. First down for the Mountaineers. I think it's safe to say he's the real deal, huh? Improvisation. Uh -huh. Oh, my. I've seen some good quarterbacks in this league over the last 15, 20 years. He's as good as most of them or, or as good as any of them have been because he's got skills on both uh, throwing and running. Richie Williams gets the first down for App State. Spot the ball at the 26. He had to have good vision there to see where the pursuit was coming from on the backside. To the ground. Richardson, first down, up to the 39. They, uh, you know, defensively, you're taught to go half as deep as the ball and, and look for a reverse or something coming back. If you don't do that, you get burned. App State starting to roll up the yardage. Look at Richardson today. Ten carries, 38 yards, and he's got the two touchdowns for the Mountaineers. They are first in total offense and conference games, 449.3 yards. Well, they're well on their way to matching that today. Williams with some time. Incomplete. What a great tackle there. Great stick of the outside. Gabriel Jackson. Is that Gabriel Jackson? That was a great hit. If that, was that is Philman, Philman Dawkins, number 26, into the ball game, and he makes a statement immediately. He just knocked that ball out of there. Second and 10. From the 39 for App State. Williams wants to throw again. 
Over the middle, intercepted. Well, that's what Wofford needed. They needed a break. Brian Ford, his fourth interception of the season. Good Tip ball. ball. And Ford makes the play. Well, that, uh, that uh, series here, Wofford had five under and two deep in a four-man rush, so they've changed the defense there. They had seven people in the secondary. May have been an ill-advised decision right there by Williams to try to fit that ball in. He could have run the ball. Chose to throw it, and Wofford now has the break that you spoke of. Walker. Well, and they're back they have in the turnover. And they're only down seven points, even though the stats are lopsided. They're still only down seven points. Just the second interception of the season for Williams. Corey Dunn. They, they forced him a little east and west there. He couldn't get north and south. But now, this is a passing down. To you don't know what Wofford's going to do. Wofford's tried to use some formations today, too, to confuse Appalachian's defense. But it looks like they don't have quite the overall team speed that Appalachian has. Wofford has won all four of its home games so far this season. And they beat VMI last week 38-23 to and rushed for over 440 yards in that game. Here's the pitch. Jackson, and he's going out of bounds. They read that all the way. Corey Lynch, 47, Corey. rides him out. Corey Lynch. Corey Lentz is uh, one of the better defensive backs in this league. He read that and immediately started up rushing inside out. Corey Lynch played in only two games last year, had an elbow injury, but he has five interceptions this season. That's first in the Southern Conference. It'll be interesting to see if they blitz here to, because they're thinking it's a passing down. Wofford four of six on third down, but this is third and 12. And we've got whistles and a stoppage in play. Well, that blast was in three deep defense there, a four-man front. And Wofford elected to take a timeout. Five and a half minutes to go in the second quarter. App State leads Wofford 14 to 7. The Terriers with the football when we come back. Five and a half minutes to go until halftime. Here, Wofford and App State 14-7. Terriers trailing the Mountaineers. College football on CSS. Auburn has won 13 consecutive SEC games. Can they make it 14 in a row against the tough LSU squad? Catch an SEC matchup between Auburn and LSU Sunday at 9, only on CSS. Appalachians uh, got Corey uh, Lynch free in the middle. He's a free safety right now. And they're, they're walking up on Wofford's wideouts. Third and 12. Jackson has the ball across midfield and brought down. Cam Spear again in on the play. We called his name several times this afternoon, Walt. Mike says we're not throwing the ball. We don't care what it is. And that was a well-executed play. Again, depending on what happens on this on this third down, this fourth down, is he going to pooch punt it again out of a formation or try to draw up latching offsides? Call you're still in the game. As Walt alluded to yeah, earlier yeah. in the game on fourth down, he did do the quick kick. Yeah. Well, fourth and a long three, almost four. This is Wofford's first attempt on fourth down. Fourth and four from the 46. Uh -huh. And Collier comes out of there and Boy. wants to talk about it with Coach Ayers. He had something called to the left side. He saw Corey Lynch cheating over there, and he <laughs> got out of there and went timeout. When you see number 47, Corey Lynch, creeping up, you don't want any part of that. And it's a key fourth down situation here for Wofford. Lynch runs around with reckless abandon and, and is a good hitter. So I... Lynch is 6 feet, 200, the sophomore from Cape Coral, Florida. Leads the Southern Conference in interceptions with five. Five interceptions already this year. And he's wrapped, racked up several tackles here at Gibbs Stadium this afternoon. Oh, he has good ball sense. He has five interceptions. He reads the patterns well and has good ball sense. Take a look at the helmet stickers, too. Lynch uh, with a lot of helmet stickers on that App State black helmet. Can't see what those stickers are. They look like little turtles from here. I think it's a little mountaineer, yeah. and he's got a lot of them there. So on a fourth and four situation, 
Where do you think Wofford may go here? I think they may send the punt team in. <laughs> Probably a good idea. <laughs> you know, they're only down seven. There's 440 left in this half. I don't know if they want to gamble, but on the other hand, they don't want to give the ball to Appalachian again because they've been moving it well. Well, here comes Collier. They must be going for it because I don't know why you'd go back out there after a timeout if you're not going to go for it. Well, Collier pursued from the backside and fumbles, gets his own fumble, but it was 97. Jason Hunter bringing the heat. Came right off that corner. He, he, he was coming no matter what. That's one of those bookends I was talking about, Hunter and Morrell. And then you got Lynch in the middle, and they got a perfect triangle. I don't, uh, you never second guess because these guys are better coaches than I am. But I, want, I tell you, it was, it was a tough decision. I'll tell you what, Collier did a great job after he fumbled to get it back. Well, it's a good yeah, it could have been, been picked up, up and taken into the end zone. Fortunately, the App State tacklers were on the ground, too. They were already celebrating the big <laughs> tackle of Collier on fourth down. So they turn him away on fourth, and now great field position to operate. Richardson, stutter step, inside the 40, and he's down to the 32. Looks like one of the special backs that have come into this league in a while. To, to think that he was a walk-on out of high school. I'm sure Jerry's got him on scholarship now, but he was a, a walk-on as, as a freshman. 5'9", 190, a sophomore from Elizabethtown, North Carolina. How could somebody from Elizabethtown be tough? 11 rushes, 49 yards, and he's got those two scores here in the first half. I'll probably hear from my sister in Pittsburgh now. Her name's Elizabeth. Richardson gets the call again. It does not get much. It should be good enough, however, for a first down. Going to be close. And he gets the first down. Fresh set of downs for App State. 3.53 to go here in the second quarter. You'd like to think that Wofford can hang on and deny a score here, at least deny a touchdown and not give up more than a field goal. Put a lot of pressure on this defense right now. And again, there's three receivers up top. That corner, that seam out there at the wide side is wide open. Richardson into the middle. Still on his feet, finally brought down. Just looking at the coverage there, uh, that slot up in the top there running in the seam is wide open. At 310 left to go in the half. Got two wide outs down here to the wide side of the field. You got two wide out, two receivers to the short side as well. Kevin Richardson trying to follow up on his tremendous performance last week against Georgia Southern. This goes out to the sideline. 82 is Jermaine Little. Got a one-man screen out there. And the inside safety was, the inside uh, offensive back was close to blocking before downfield before the ball was uh, caught. That was that was Richardson as well. And Jermaine Little, four catches today for 109 yards. It's not a bad work for, for had, half. Had a nice 62-yard reception to set up a score earlier in the first half. Well, I keep saying, what? Look at the cushion up top with the wide out there. That's tough coverage, one on one, and down here to the near side. Third and four. Williams throws. Feathers it in, touchdown. Daniel Bettis on a perfect throw from Richie Williams. And within inches of being tipped and knocked away. Daniel Bettis, his third touchdown catch of the season. Richie Williams with his eighth TD toss. It looked like, uh, I don't know, it was Brian Ford down there just didn't time the jump, just barely Justin missed Justin Franklin, 45. Uh, Justin Franklin. Yep. Just beyond his fingertips. See, he's an inside linebacker, and how deep was he? Roush on to add the extra point. Up and through, and a flag comes out after the play. Either somebody moved or somebody he was uh, holding down there. Well, it was a 25-yard connection between Williams and Daniel Bettis. 
personal foul. Leaping, number 29. The extra point is good. That foul will be carried over to the kickoff. Timeout. Le leaping, he, he tried to hurdle and walk on the defensive uh, lineman's back to block this. Well, it didn't help. And prior to that, here's the pass. And look at the touch Williams puts right on this. Here. It's not pretty. See, that's an inside linebacker trying to cover down, down the seam on a tight end. He's covering a tight end. And that's what Daniel Bettis does. He catches touchdown passes. It's not the most perfect ball in the world, but it's right where Bettis can take it into the end zone. He just outran the linebacker's coverage there. 25-yard connection, Williams to Bettis. And I'd coming like to, up at the half here, Walt. Well, I'd like to see that leaping penalty. <laughs> we'll go around the Southern Conference, interview Richard Johnson, athletic director here at Wofford, and we've got all the halftime numbers from this Southern Conference battle for first place in the league. And you want to see the leaping, is that, is that right, I'd like Walt? to see that in a replay, but there's still 245 left in this half. Now, if Wofford were a passing team, you say they got plenty of time. But if you're going to grind it out, they don't have plenty of time. So because of the penalty. I'll look for this kick to go out of the end zone. Yeah, anyway. App State will kick it off from midfield. Roush, 91. Julian Roush to kick it away. From that Gastonia. leaping call is rarely, I've never seen, I don't, you don't see it called very often, but occasionally it is called. You can walk up on your, on your teammate's back and then leap, try to, to block an extra point or field goal. And this one's going deep. Right through the uprights. <laughs> It'll be a touchback. That's a 60-yard field goal if it's in uh, regular play. 2.15 to go in the second quarter. App State jumping out to a 21-7 lead. Two touchdown runs from Kevin Richardson and a touchdown catch from Daniel Bettis. And they're up by 14 as Wofford takes the field on offense from its own 20. That's getting overcast here and a little breeze kicking up too. That flag's blowing in the end zone. So... We may get some of that rain that was forecast for this morning. Josh Collier, the quarterback from Bonaire, Georgia, 6'2", 195, the sophomore at the controls for the Terriers. Done. Still running. And now it's a scrum. That's a great effort. Appalachian had eight men in what we call the box from, from end to end there. They're playing to, against the run. They still made nine or ten yards. Look at those legs driving. Omar Byram, number 95, had done, but he squirted by and kept the legs driving, and they actually never did bring him down. Four rushes, 22 yards for Corey Dunn today, the senior from Lexington, Kentucky, 5'11", 205. Adrian Young has nowhere to go on second and short. That'll bring up third down for Wofford. They're getting a good spot here. Does it look like he lost a little yardage, but very generous. As my just mother used to say, quarterback sneak, quarterback sneak. Just shy of the 30, we're looking for the quarterback sneak yeah, from Mother Nadzak. <laughs> yeah, when I used to coach, and she'd say after the game, why didn't you quarterback sneak? <laughs> You're even taking heat from mom. <laughs> yeah, you got it. That's a tough job, coaching. <laughs> Third and less than a yard from the 29. 128 to go. Well, they got the first. That should be a first down. Gabriel oh, Jackson should pick it up. Off tackle power play there to get the first down. Now, Wofford, obviously, those guys want to score, but they might just be satisfied to run this clock out until they get better field position in the second half. They don't want to give the ball to Appalachian here, and they don't want to have to fumble it or, or throw an interception. So. Jackson for two or three. I think you're right, Walt. That's yeah. what they want to do. And the, the tough part, part about running the option mm -hmm. offense, when you get behind, it, it makes it awful tough. Can you see who's down there, Tom? We do have an injured player. Gabriel Jackson has 13 rushes for 41 yards and a touchdown. There is a Wofford player down, and that'll stop the clock with 58 seconds to go. 21-7, App State in the lead. They can ill afford to lose another lineman. They've got a lot of people hurt. They had two offensive linemen that played last week and aren't playing today, I understand. Looks like 
He's going to be all right. Brad Anderson, number 71. Was the player down, comes off the field under his own power. And they're, they're getting short alignment. They've got a bunch of people bruised. And Oh, just rolled on the back of his legs there. Second and eight. Clock continues to tick as we go inside of 50 seconds to halftime. They'll keep it on the ground. Young across the 40. Up to the 44 and a first down. That'll stop the clock momentarily. But they're not going to throw it. They, I, I just don't think they're going to throw it deep and gamble and give up anything cheap late in, the, in this half. They can regroup, make some defensive adjustments, and get back in this ball game. They get the kickoff to start the second half. Collier quickly under center. They'll run it. Jackson to the far side. Cross midfield has a little bit of room. Well, now Jackson you, now inside the got, 40. Now you got to consider doing some throwing the ball to get field goal range. Gabriel Jackson found a hole and busted loose for a first down. Ball spotted at 38. 23 seconds to go. And Collier will spike it. Right there. Well, that, that was a quick four well, seconds. It's down now, now down to 19 yeah. seconds. Um, what, does App State have their own timekeeper here? 19-yard <laughs> pickup <laughs> by Gabriel Jackson. Well, that tells us what? That tells us that, that they're going to try to run the ball or throw the ball and get in field goal range at least. Or they wouldn't have spiked the ball to stop the clock. They've got one timeout left and apparently didn't want to use it yet. Ball just inside the 38 of App State. That eye formation. Oh. Collier. Almost dragged down. Are you going to get a nice 15-yard penalty here for face mask? Morrell almost dragged him down, but as Walt mentioned, look for the face mask penalty. And that's going to put him in field goal range with 13 seconds left. We get a closer look at the play here. Marcus Morrell on right the pursuit. Right there. And that's just not incidental. That's, that's yanking it. That's 15 yards. Wasn't intentional. You went, you're you out in the heat First of battle. Foul. Face mask on the defense, number 44. The penalty is 15 yards from the previous spot and an automatic first down. I think Jerry's a little upset with his player there. They had him cornered. When you reach out to go and grab anything you can. Except the face mask. In this yeah, place. you don't want it. Or when you get it, you need, you need to be smart enough to let go and get an incidental five-yard penalty instead of 15. First penalty of the afternoon for App State, but it's a big one. Young spins his way inside the 20, and they'll they're gonna drop kick, him at the 17. And they're going to kick the field goal. That's some well, unhappy I'll people here that they're not going for a touchdown, but that's the intelligent thing here is to get some points on the board. Wofford taking a timeout with 9.2 seconds to go, trailing 21 to 7 as we head towards halftime. Nick Robinson is number 27. It's only his fourth field goal attempt of the season. He's made one. And that one is also his longest field goal of 25 yards. So Nick Robinson in a big situation here from Dillon, Florida, the junior, 5'10", 180, coming in trying to tack on three more points. Well, they were kicking him from 40 yards out yesterday in practice, so he's capable. I mean, that's not out of his range at all. He's got a little tough angle from the right hash. And I, I don't know about that. They were kicking from the middle of the field yesterday. They also had a fake yesterday in practice. Now maybe we'll see we'll see that, but uh, this corner out here for Appalachia is not buying the fake. He's staying home. 35-yard field goal attempt. A low line drive. And it went through. And it is good. It looked like a knuckleball. Wow. Not a Picasso, but it gets the oh. job done. That wasn't even an Eastman Kodak. <laughs> <laughs> No pictures in the box score, luckily, right. for Mr. Nick Robinson. 
Tomorrow morning is still a three-point field goal. I'll tell you what, that reminds me of the Adam Benatieri kick a few years ago against the Oakland Raiders right. in the snow to win the exactly. first-round playoff game for the New England Patriots. Low liner. And we don't those, have weather conditions here today, certainly. And for those of you folks listening, this guy I'm working with is from Massachusetts. Well, so just, that's, why we know, got, that's why he knows that. <laughs> I'll remember that kick for quite some time, uh, Mr. Clutch, Adam Vinatieri, and Nick Robinson, Mr. Clutch there. Great job by Wofford to get three uh, points, get a little momentum going to the locker good room. Good clock management and that face mask really helped set that up. This game's still not over. I, I look for, uh, you know, Mike Harris and his staff, they do a good job. I look for them to make a lot of defensive adjustments, but there's so much skill in that Appalachian State receiver court, it's tough. Mike Ayers in his 18th season, Two and six versus App State. He was also the head coach at East Tennessee State from 1985 to 1987. Five-time coach of the year. And in 03, he was the national coach of the year. Took his team to the 1AA semifinals. I remember that game well. Lost to Delaware. And, and uh, I had a Delaware. I was the NCAA rep, the game administrator for a couple of Delaware games. And, and they were really a good football program, good team. Their first in total defense in conference games, averaging 301.7. App, though, is right behind them, second in total defense in the conference. All right, these armchair quarterbacks, are you going to kick it deep to that return man again, or are you going to squib it to these guys on the 30-yard line and let these four seconds run off the clock? I don't think this ball is going very far. I'm going to squib. Oh, a little pooch kick. Good, smart play. Make that big tight end run it. There you go. 35 for App State. Trey Hennessy made the play, but the time expires here in the second quarter. We've completed 30 minutes of play from Gibbs Field, the final home game of the season for the Wofford Terriers, and they head to the locker room, trailing App State 21 to 10. Coach Moore has the lead, but Wofford came back to tack on three points near the end of the half, and we got a ball game. Halftime is coming up here on CSS. It's Wofford and App State. More to come right after this. Welcome back to Spartanburg, South Carolina. Southern Conference football on CSS, Appalachian State, and Wofford, and we're at halftime. Let's take a look at the Southern Conference standings, and you can see this is a fight for the top spot in the Southern Conference. Wofford at 2-1 of the conference at 4-2 overall. Furman 2-1 with a 6-1 overall record followed by Chattanooga, 5-2 overall. And then the fourth member, Appalachian State, trying to get to the top spot with a victory over Wofford today. They're 4-2 overall. The rest of them look like this. Georgia Southern, which has lost to Wofford and App State this season, 3-2, 4-3 overall. Western Carolina at 2-3 overall. The Citadel is 1-2 in conference play. Fought Furman right down to the wire, a triple overtime game last week, but the Citadel came out on the losing end of that one against the Paladins, and Elon wraps it up at 0-3 in the conference and 3-4 and overall. Other games this afternoon in the Southern Conference. Elon will take on Furman in the four-way tie for the top spot of the Southern Conference. Elsewhere, the Citadel goes to Georgia Southern. That's at 3.30 here on CSS. And then Western Carolina against Chattanooga at 6 o'clock. And that is your schedule in the Southern Conference this afternoon and this evening. The TIAA Crefts Southern Conference Student Athlete of the Week is Bernie Sykes. A junior forward goalkeeper from Columbus, Georgia, was forced into work between the pipes due to the injury of the Terrier's starting goalkeeper, responding admirably to the charge by going 2-0 on the week with a pair of league shutouts against the Citadel and College of Charleston. Sykes posted 10 saves in two games, which included a career-high tying eight versus the Cougars. In limited action and goal this year, Sykes has garnered a 3-0-1 record, amassing a .68 goals against average over that time period. She's also held Terrier opponents scoreless over the last 252 minutes in the pipes. In the classroom, Sykes is a chemistry major with a 3.52 grade point average. This week's TIAA Crep, Southern Conference Student Athlete of the Week, Bernie Sykes. We're at halftime between App State and Wofford from Gibbs Stadium. Much more to come here on CSS right after this. Welcome back to Spartanburg, South Carolina. Wofford trailing App State 21 to 10 at the half. And joining us, Richard Johnson, the athletic director 
here at Wofford. And Richard, first of all, let's get your impressions of the first half. This is an enormous game as these teams fight for the top spot in the Southern Conference. You're asking an old basketball yeah. guy about football. <laughs> uh, it, it's been a good first half, obviously. Um, uh, App State's a very good team, and I think today you've got two of the uh, better coaches in the league, and both of them have been around a long time. Jerry Moore and Mike Ayers, they both do a great job, and uh, and App State's a very good football team. We're still in it, but uh, they're they're a good football team. We've we've had some opportunities, but uh, they're hard to stop. They got a very high-powered offense, and they can throw. And Williams is so talented, it's hard to contain him. Richard, tell me about your situation here at Wofford as the athletic director. What are you trying to accomplish here with a student body of just over 1,000, and I believe 25 percent of the students involved in athletics? That's correct. About a 1,200 student body, and uh, and and we're we're growing slightly. Uh, but it's uh, what we try to do is provide an overall student athlete experience. We want the kids. I mean, we're a throwback in many ways. Uh, you come out to our football practices, you'll see guys coming down late from labs and uh, kind of filling in where they can. We don't treat the athletes differently in terms of uh, giving them scheduling priorities and scheduling blocks, things like that. So it, it, it's a it's always somewhat problematic to everybody at practice and. I think our guys do a great job. Mike's trying to put his scheme in, and, and his star running back is at a, a student government meeting. You know, So those are the kinds of things that we do, but it, but it all works. You've got a football program that has joined the elite teams in 1AA, yet you've only got 1,000 students. How does it happen? I mean, I know you have the scholarships, but how do you bring in such talented athletes who also perform in the classroom as well? Well, it's, it's a lot of hard work on the part of the staff, and I think our staff does a great job. And Mike Ayers... Uh, and his staff does a great job of, of scheming. I mean, what we do is different. What we do is a little hard. I think we take advantage of the fact that we've got some pretty bright kids. We put in some schemes that are hard to learn. And if you'll note, uh, over the years, our, our teams have maybe not started as fast as others, but by mid-year they start to pick it up and they start to figure it out and they get to be, they, they get to be pretty good and, uh, and pretty hard to, to defend, if you will. Uh, and part of the key to our offense is ball control. We, we try to possess the ball as much as we can, and, and it's been very effective for us. You know, we typically will lead to Southern or be right near the top in rushing yardage, and, uh, and we're getting more of a balanced attack in throwing this year, and we got a young quarterback. But uh, um, we, we've just we've been very fortunate. I don't think that maybe without this staff and Mike Ayers we've been able to do that. Tell me a little more about head coach Mike Ayers. You have a coaching background as a basketball coach. Tell me what makes him so successful and how he is able to touch kids, to, to get into their lives and become a part of their lives and be a positive influence? I, I think in large part the, the man, the kind of person he is. Um, I've told many people this, and I mean this sincerely, I would be a much better coach today, three years out of it, uh, having uh, watched his program up close and personal, been in a locker room with him. Even though we were colleagues and friends, we'd vacation together, I was not in his locker room. I wasn't around that program like I am now and his relationships with the players, the way he, he approaches the game, the way he motivates them, the way he sets standards and holds them accountable to those standards. And he does it now. In his younger days, Mike was uh, uh, maybe a little different than he is now, maybe a little uh, tougher, a little wilder. Uh, now Mike is, uh, he can do it with a raised eyebrow, just the inflection in his voice. He's not a wild man out there, but I tell you, he is a motivator. And uh, if you've ever heard him speak, you want to run out and hit somebody. And, uh, and, that's, and that's, I think, what comprises him, the way, his, his pers personality, how he treats the players, and, and they love him. I mean, to a man, they love him. As an athletic director, what makes you most proud as you observe all the sports that you oversee when you watch these student athletes? Hey, it's just a really engaging. We had a Terry Club board meeting today and we brought in our men's team and our women's team. Uh, and they're just nice kids. They're, 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 they've got great personalities. They're fun to be around. Uh, the people that are out raising money for them, I thought that was important that they get to know those kids. And, uh, and we just had a great meeting because the, the women's basketball team came in. They won four games last year, but they're on the rise. And those girls are positive and they're working hard and they were engaging. Uh, and they're just charming people. And it, they, I think that's why our people work so hard to raise money for them. Richard, thanks so much for your time and good luck in the second half against App State. Thank you. Tight ball game Thanks here. Thanks a lot. I appreciate okay, it. Okay, enjoy the second half. We're going to take a break here at halftime. We've got much more to come. Highlights and stats are coming up. 21-10, App State on top of the Terriers at halftime. Against App State, the 17th ranked team in the nation. We'll take a look at some of the highlights from the first half. And really, App State is a high-powered offense. There's no question about that wall. But Wofford has a weapon of its own right here in Gabriel Jackson. Well, he's doing a great job in the absence of Hobbs, who broke his leg last week. But Kevin latson has got so much team speed. It's uh, the receiver and, and uh, quarterback position. They're really dangerous. Kevin Richardson with two touchdown runs in the first half. 
A walk and then, on from and then watch Richie North Williams. Carolina. Yeah, watch Richie Williams right there to Bettis. Daniel Bettis, his third touchdown catch of the season, the tight end. But look at the throw right on the money where the defensive back couldn't get it. Take a look at the numbers. Rushing yards, Wofford has the edge there, 127 to 88, but the passing yards dominated by App State. Wofford's got a total of 11. That was my high school basketball number. <laughs> <laughs> and we're looking at 173. I'll tell you, uh, Richie, I'm impressed with him. It's the first time I've seen him live this year. And you can see the first downs and time of possession relatively close. But App State ranks 17th in the country. Wofford is hanging with him, Walt. Well, I think one of the decisions Wofford made and Mike Ayers made was to, to go for it on fourth and five at the 45-yard line. And it didn't work out. And they lost about 20 yards on the play. That really put them a little bit in a hole. And now they got to fight back. But they got a field goal before the half, and they're back in it. This is not over. 11 points is not the end of the world. You were noting in the first half that maybe the coverage by Wofford a little soft. Do you see an adjustment there? They were giving a lot of cushion to those wideouts, but then again, they're afraid of the deep speed. So I, you know, if I, I don't know how to make that adjustment unless you can get to Williams. And if you can't get to Williams, you're in trouble. And when you do get to him, he scrambles well. So it's a dilemma. We talked about Collier, and he's running the offense quite well. They're a 4-2 record so far this season. He doesn't do a lot of great things, but he's got them in this ball game at the half. 21-10, Josh Collier, the quarterback for Wofford. Richie Williams, another spectacular performance in the first half. We'll hear more about him coming up here on CSS. It's halftime, 21-10. App State leads it over Wofford. The Mountaineers and the Terriers, hey, wake up. We got the second half coming up here on CSS. Welcome back to Spartanburg, South Carolina. It's your paint your body kind of day. 21-10 App State leads Wofford at the half. We're all set for the third quarter of play. Julian Rausch will kick it away for App State. Zach Gray, number 30. Brian Kemp, number 5. Deep for the Wofford Terriers. Kemp feels it in the end zone. He's coming out. Across the 20 and met right at right the 20. 20. Right. Should have stayed, would have avoided the punishment. <laughs> but it, the chance of running it back is always there. I would run it out all the time. I mean, I'd I tell you what, that's what the game's always taking a knee. What is this, sissy sport we're playing here? <laughs> Not according to <laughs> Brian Kemp, number five. He took it out. Josh Collier, two completions, four attempts, 11 yards. But don't be surprised by those numbers. Wofford is a running team, and Collier controls the running patterns, does not do much throwing during the ball game. But he loses the snap here. Oh, it picked up yeah, by... Uh, picked up Young, Adrian Young. Gobbled up that snap. Collier had a little bit of trouble with the exchange. He'll bring up second and 10. Well, it looks like the snap was up there. He, he might have pulled out a little early, a little anxious to get the play underway. Center's number 71, Brad Anderson, who was injured in the second quarter, but now is back at center for Wofford. That's not the way they want to start this drive. Young, maybe two. You know, we always felt the first two series of the second half were the turning points of a ball game, where it had a great influence on the ball game because it kind of sets the tempo, especially when you're behind. If you go three and out and have to punt up here past midfield, just to midfield, morally, or it's, your morale just gets. Adrian Young, 10 rushes, 42 yards so far this afternoon. From Hickory, North Carolina, 5'11", 200, the sophomore, Adrian Young, number six. Collier keeps, cuts it inside, but can't go much further than the 25. Number 31 on the stop for App State. Pierre Banks in there to make the play. Well, that's uh, one of the decisions you have to make there. He had a chance on the corner that time, but, but uh, he also saw an opening inside to close pretty quickly. So Coach Mike Ayer's team has to punt it away on their first series of the second half. No, not good. I mean, when you have to do that, it just... Uh, no. Chris Tommy boots it away. Takes a Wofford bounce. Trickles down to the 25. Right okay. First and 10 for App State from its own 25. 12.58 to go here in the third quarter. 21-10. 
the Mountaineers on top of the Terriers as the Mountaineers come out for their first series of the second half. Well, it's going to be interesting to see if Wofford made some adjustments. Look at Richie Williams, 11 of 16, 173 yards, a touchdown, and one interception, only his second interception thrown this season. That's amazing, as much as they throw in the schedule they've played. Appalachian State coming off a victory over Georgia Southern last week, 24 to 7. Well, the last couple series, uh, Wofford's been in five under and two deep, and uh, they're in the same defense again. But... Richardson churns and burns his way out to the 35, very close to a first down. They're playing those five people. They're playing those five people a little back off the line. Once you get past the front four, there's nobody there for, for seven or eight yards. Kevin Richardson with his two touchdown runs this season. Today, rather, now has nine this season. Four, four receivers to the wide side of the field. Four eligible receivers. And one to the near side. Yep. Flag comes out. Williams throws. This one's lead. coming back, though, Tom. Jermaine Little has the catch, but a flag Number comes eight. out in the area of offensive holding. I tell you, Appalachian's got some qu good quickness and speed. Motion? I thought it was uh, where the flag was thrown. It had to be a hold. The like official the made the motion yeah. gesture. Well, the umpire threw the flag, okay. and he usually calls holding. Illegal shift on the offense, oh. 70. Five-yard penalty, replay, first down. That's twice I've now, been wrong today. And the flag had to come out late, though, <laughs> yeah, because it was a late the flag. shift has to happen before the snap, yet the flag came out during play. Well, the official's probably, uh, his mind's going, is that a, a violation? So and when he, he had finally to think about it, it out, out. Yeah, exactly. You got the flag out. Well. It equals first and 15. Now look at the coverage. They're five under and two deep. And you got a four man rush. Both teams, two penalties for 20 yards so far this afternoon. Well, the game's been well called, I believe. The official, officials are doing a great job of Four receivers to the wide side. From the 31, Williams wants to run. Oh my. Comes to the near side, crosses midfield, and steps out of bounds. First oh. down. Mountaineers, how can you stop Richie Williams? If he does not throw, he's able to get out of the pocket and <laughs> amass yardage. Well, you can call his game off. <laughs> he can stop him that way. <laughs> Put him on the bus. Get him out of here. I tell you, he is tough. Richie Williams averages 80.8 .8 yards per ball game. He's got six rushes today, 59 yards, well on his way to his average here in the third quarter. Early going, 12-18 to go in the third. I saw him two years ago when he was just developing, but he is so, so confident in what he's doing right now. And there's a confident throw right there. Not so confident on the catch, but it is made. With seven defensive de defenders back there, they're still finding the seams. That was Hans Batashan. Yeah. That's another first down for the Mountaineers. This may be the best looking ball club I've seen in this league in a while. First and 10 from the 36. App State in the white, Wofford in the black and gold. Richardson wrestled down. See, they, they don't have much success running with Bethay in there defensively. Uh, most of their yard is coming from outside the tackles and throwing in the seams and the, and the open open gaps in that defense in the secondary. Now, Caden Bethay is in there, number 92. He's 6'2", 285, and the senior for head coach Mike Ayers. And he's an excellent football player. Second and nine from the 34. Richardson on the catch. What? And he's got a first down. Did you see the moves he made the first two guys miss? Uh, Bethay's going back in. He was out for a play or two. There goes one guy. 
There goes the second defender. And, and he keeps his balance and he doesn't lose a whole lot of speed. App State marching it down the field. Started from their own 25. Now they're at the 24 of Wofford. Jermaine Little. And stepped Little, out of bounds. Yeah, out of bounds, about two yards shy of the first down. That'll bring up second and short. It's a well well conceived play. They throw it to the split out. He he takes a couple steps downfield, in comes back, and the inside slot person comes out and blocks the corner. It's about the third time they've run that play, and they've made yardage every single time. Jermaine Little has five catches for 117 yards. Came into the ball game, averaging 56.5. So Jermaine Little having an afternoon for himself. Again, five catches, 117 yards, and he's got a 62-yard catch in the first half. Uh, I'll tell you what, he, they're, they're just, nothing much moving. <laughs> Richie Williams is, he's even faking out his own players now. <laughs> he faked out his offensive line. Now they know how it feels. <laughs> third and short, 10-19 to go in the second quarter. How many times have they had third in a yard or less? And they'll run it. Oh, yeah. Trey Hennessy, number 35, mm -hmm. has the first time down just outside the 10-yard line. Gave Richardson the rest right now. Hennessy from Morgantown, North Carolina, 6-1-2-10. The freshman on the season, averaging 3.8, three TDs. He's got 84 yards so far this season. I, I think they put uh, Richardson back in, though. Richardson just to the left of Williams. Look at the gap up there on the 12-yard line on that receiver. That's 10-yard, that's a 10-yard cushion. Richardson can't handle it. Williams trying to swing it to Richardson, and he dropped it. Well, Wofford was uh, hoping that was a backward pass, but it wasn't. It was, it was a forward throw. Strong the percentage stuff down there now inside the, the, the red zone down inside the 20. And they're doing that because of the cushion that Wofford's given those receivers. They've, they're giving them great respect and rightly so. Richie Williams over 200 yards passing, 202 to be exact, against 11 yards passing from Wofford. Williams still has it. Heads to the pylon. Touchdown, Richie Williams. Too much team speed. Too much team speed. And a little option out to the right. When you can uh, fake to Richardson inside and pull it out, you got a pretty good chance because they've got to be keying somewhat on Richardson. Second touchdown run of the season for Richie Williams. And now Julian Rausch to add the extra point for the Mountaineers. Good. And it's good. 28 to 10, App State on top with 9.34 to go in the third quarter. Richie Williams to the corner of the end zone for the touchdown. App State on top. Back in Spartanburg, South Carolina, third quarter, 28-10, App State on top of Wofford. Kick off your Monday night football coverage with Sports Night as the crew comes to you live from the Georgia Dome before the Falcons battle against the Jets. Catch Sports Night Monday at 6 and 11 only on CSS, your source for Southeast Sports. App State set to kick off. Julian Rausch. C.J. Underwood, Zach Gray are deep. This is Gray from his six. And brought down. 49, Justin, uh, 49 rather for the Mountaineers. Chris Johnson on the play. Here's the scoring drive. Richie Williams capped it off with his 11 yard run. 10 plays, 75 yards, three minutes, 24 seconds. Williams into the end zone, his second rushing touchdown of the season. They took three and a half minutes off that clock. Very efficient, though. Time for Wofford to respond with 9.28 to go in the third quarter. It trails 28 to 10. Collier, the handoff. 
A tough running inside against this team. Big white wave washes over the running back. You can see the App State defenders starting to feed off that energy oh, yeah. as they continue to turn Wofford away. And they know that uh, that uh, Wofford can't throw the ball deep very well, or haven't they haven't thrown it deep very well, and uh, they're just loading up up front. The uh, high formation they've used a lot today. Second and 11. Number 12 is Josh Collier, the quarterback for Wofford. Hands it off. 34, Corey Dunn. So close, so close to breaking that. Banks did a great job hanging on to that leg. Third and two. From the 28. You got nine people within three yards of the line of scrimmage. Collier, the quick move, darts forward, has the first down. A little quarterback counter draw. Wofford's got to just be patient now and try to get on the, on the board again. Josh Collier, his eighth carry of the ball game. It's only got seven yards, though. I'll tell you, Make it's it tough to run. With, it's tough to run, Tom, with eight and nine people within three yards of the football. That's Young across the 35. I'm impressed with the leg drive of, of some of these uh, young, not no pun intended, young running backs for Wofford. Adrian Young from Hickory, North Carolina. A rock solid 200 pounds at 5'11", the sophomore. And today, 11 rushes for 46 yards. Remember, Wofford <laughs> lost its top running back last week against VMI. Again, there's nine defensive players within three yards of the line of scrimmage. And guess who? Guess who? Gabriel J Jackson stopped on the play. He runs from the inside out. All the way. He had zeroed in on him all the way. Corey Lynch cut him down from his safety position. Third and 11 for Wofford. Eight and a half minutes to go. Wofford's going to have to throw the ball here. Wofford six of 11 on third down. They haven't run a screen yet. Maybe they could. Uh... Collier goes up top. Incomplete. I'll tell you that was close to that was a great that was a great throw. Just not quite there. Looking for Sheil Wood just beyond his reach, and it's fourth down. Just running a fade pattern down the sideline, one on one. Trying to get loose. And he does have a step on the defender. Just off his fingertips. Justin Woze on the coverage for App State. Dexter Johnson is deep to receive the punt. I'll tell you, Appalachians uh, fans that are here. Just an awful. I don't even right want there. to say that word because wow. what happens in golf, that's called a shank. Chris yeah. Tommy just hit it directly <laughs> out of bounds, and App State will start first and 10 with excellent field position in Wofford territory. App State has the lead 28 to 10 over the Wofford Terriers. More on CSS after this. Third quarter here at Gibbs Stadium, 28-10. App State has the lead over Wofford, and that's the punter, Chris Tommy. And Walt, his average is going to go down. He was averaging 34.9 per punt. The last punt, 10 yards. 10 yards. It, it, it was, he just shanked it off the side of his foot. I have and a that, golfing buddy that does that. He kicks the ball or he shanks the ball? <laughs> he Both. Kicks, after he shanks it, he kicks it. <laughs> <laughs> they've got to they've make a stop here. Well, Richie Williams saw something he did not like and elected to call a timeout. The first for App State in the half. 
But for Wofford, they are in dire straits right now, down 28 to 10. Don't miss a triple header of live college football Saturday on CSS, starting with a Big Ten matchup between Indiana and Michigan State at noon. Chattanooga meets Appalachian State in the Southern Conference Showdown at 3.30, followed at 7 by West Alabama and Henderson State. It's all on CSS. So a crucial point in the ball game right here, Walt Wofford desperately needing a defensive stop. Absolutely. If they give up a touchdown here, you can just you're going to start seeing this stadium empty out. And, and the Appalachian people over there, this nice crowd here now, they filtered in and that uh, before the game started, and they're making a lot of noise over there today. They've got reason to make noise. Richie Williams with a touchdown throw and run. Kevin Richardson with two touchdown runs to give him nine on the season. That's Richie Williams. Incredible accomplishments here at App State. It's a must defensive stop. But. Richardson has it. Richardson and he gets three or four. Inside the 40. And they tried a little motion away from this and then came back this side with Richardson. But I tell you, he's got some open seams there. They, they've got Wofford so spread out that uh, with a back like Richardson and a quarterback like Williams, there's a lot of seams to run into. Richardson had 285 all-purpose yards last week against Georgia Southern in the victory for App State. And they have not sacked Williams yet today either. Here's Richardson again. And he rumbles close to a first down inside the 35 to about the 33. Yeah, five or six yards. That just that offensive line just firing straight out. And Richardson's a little gippy. He's running off. He's uh, he's limping a little bit going off the field. 17 rushes, 71 yards, and the two scores for Kevin Richardson as he heads to the bench for at least this play here on third and short. Trey Hennessy yeah, is in Hennessey, for him. 35 Hennessy is into the game for App State. They'll fake the run. Williams throws on the run, incomplete. He not only had that guy open, he had another receiver underneath him open, and he could have run for the first down. He had three options there. His, I guess his eyes lit up when he saw that receiver wide open down there. Yeah, that was Brandon Turner who gave maximum effort. And he was wide open. Yeah, you got two night. other receivers who were open as well. Wofford really back on their heels right here. But it's fourth down. They have a chance to make the stop. This is big. But look at the trips up top. And there's only one defender out there that's within. within. They, Williams complete. It's going to be a first I am, down. I am so impressed with the hands of these receivers and the throw. That had some speed on it too. That was not a that was not a law pass. Nine is William Mayfield out of Durham, North Carolina. His catch good enough for a first down and a fourth down conversion for App State as they continue to march down the field. First and 10 from the 23, four and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. App State up 21-10, or 28-10 rather. Jermaine Little. Run out of bounds to 15. Another catch for Jermaine Little. They knocked this in the end zone here. Wofford's in deep trouble. Just a little fast out in the flat. They run the wide, out, the wide receivers out and bring him out uh, falling in the flat. Second and two. Hennessy's still in there, Tom. Right at the 15. Richardson still on the bench. Hennessy has it. And he goes down to the 10. And it's a first and goal for App State. They had nobody on the outside shoulder of the left tackle. And it was wide open because the, the linebacker and defensive back were out with the wideouts. Richardson coming back into the game, number 28 for App State. And that is not good news for Wofford. You never want to have anybody get hurt, but Richardson and Williams in the backfield, a two-pronged threat for the Mountaineers. He, he probably had a little cramp. Little has it, 
Heads for the end zone and scores. Touchdown, Jermaine Little on the run. They're hitting that wide seam out there, the wide gap coming around. It's there. Some great blocking on the perimeter. Nothing fancy. Alex Love had a chance at him, but couldn't wrap him up. You'd like to see somebody knock the ball out of a runner's hands when he sticks it out to get across the line like that. Jermaine Little with the touchdown run for App State. The extra point is good. 35 to 10. The Mountaineers have a commanding advantage here in the third quarter. 3.48 to go from Gibbs Stadium in Spartanburg, South Carolina. 3.48 to go in the third quarter. App State with a 35 to 10 lead over Wofford. The scoring drive, seven plays, 42 yards. Used up two minutes and 20 seconds. Jermaine Little with a 10 yard touchdown run. It's a nice high kick, good, good coverage. That's Underwood. Up to the 23. First to 10 for Wofford. Now you start to wonder whether uh, Jerry Moore feels safe with this lead and whether he's going to rest Williams in the fourth quarter and, uh, and Richardson. They have Chattanooga next week. Yes, yeah, Sap State home against Chattanooga at 3.30 next Saturday. Well, they got their corner here on a little toss sweep. Jackson up to the 28. One of the reasons Wofford's been so successful over the last several years is because they keep doing what they do. And when they play defense, this offense is good enough to win with. Gabriel Jackson has the lone touchdown for Wofford. Collier to the air. Complete. Good throw. Collier to Shield Wood and a first down for the Terriers. Watch Lynch. Uh, Lynch started the defensive safety. He started in, but then he retreated and went back to deep middle, thinking somebody was going deep on him. That was a great throw. You see, he tucked the ball and, and bent over like he was going to hand off or, or keep it himself. That helped a little protection there. 12 yard pickup on the pass play. Collier. Cross midfield, very close to another first down for the Terriers. Yeah, I sound redundant, but Warford's doing what they do best. And they're going to stay with us. I think he will mix a little, a few more passes in, but he has to do it on downs that so, aren't so conspicuous, like third and eight, third and nine. He has to do it on the first and second downs. And they're doing it without their top back, Michael Hobbs, injured yeah. last week. And out for the remainder of the season with a broken ankle. Back to the ground. Center did a great job right there. Corey Dunn picks up six. And Corey McKenna, the center, did a great job. Is that Anderson back in there, Tom? At center? Yeah. We'll have to check on that. But he did a great job. And, uh, yeah, I think it is, Anderson. Okay. Collier gets it away, has a man, overthrows it. He was covered all the way there. That, he couldn't get to that defensive back, had a better shot at that than, than the receiver. Lynch was on the coverage, number 47, Corey Lynch. He's a good looking football player, isn't he? He's got his hands on his hips, so is he getting a little bit tired? He's, he's, uh, he's breathing hard, got bent over a little bit. <laughs> Third and five from the 44. Handoff. Done. Good second effort by he Dunn. got it. Great second effort. Get, to, get that first down. Our vantage point is right on the 40. And it looks like Dunn definitely had enough for the first down. And he did. The official signaling first down with 2.03 to go in the third quarter. 
And we've got an injured App State player on the field. Look, I'm just check that number out there. If Fisher will get out of the way, we can never be able to do this. <laughs> got to talk to the commissioner of officials. Don Lucas is up here and tell that guy to get out of the camera's way. <laughs> App State Athletic training staff attending to the player on the field. Mountaineer is in a commanding position, 35 to 10. Jeremy Wiggins, the uh, one of the safeties for App State, the only guy on that team with his shirt out over, not tucked in. 31 is Pierce Banks from Asheville, North Carolina, clutching his right knee. Now will be helped off by the medical staff. Pierce Banks. Freshman. Just a just a freshman. You hate to see anybody get hurt in this game. It's a great foot a great game, but injuries are part of it. 17th season at App State for head coach Jerry Moore. Appears to be headed towards yet another victory here in the Southern Conference. And App State, if they can win this game will snap the four game home winning streak for Wofford here at Gibbs Stadium and actually become only the second opponent in the last 19 games to beat Wofford on its own turf. And as I mentioned a long time ago prior to the game one of the few losses in the month of October the Halloween month has been very good to Wofford over the past several years. They don't lose very often in October and I attribute that to the great coaching of Mike and his staff that they they seem to get better as the season goes along, but they ran into a buzzsaw here today. 125 to go in the third quarter and the scoreboard a little scary if you're on the Wofford side of the field. 35 to 10 App State in front. Second and nine. Collier has it. Pitches. Gabriel Jackson out of bounds. Short game. If at all. Jeremy Touchstone made the play there. Touchstone, not a big guy, 5'7", 155, a sophomore from Riverdale, Georgia. I have a grandson that could relate to that playing high school football. He thinks he's so small, 5'7", nobody will want him. It's all about the determination and oh, the yeah. heart. And speed. Not about the size. Perfect example, Devon Folks, the receiver who was here at oh, App yeah. State last year. He was in an NFL camp, in the camp of the Indianapolis Colts before being waived, exactly. potentially headed to Canada to play professional football. Devon Fultz. Adrian Young again. The difference probably between Hobbs and Young is Hobbs probably had one more step of quickness to make that cut there. If he gets away from that tackle, he, he could still be running. Yeah, Michael Hobbs twice this season rushing for over 100 yards. Wofford isn't anywhere near the 300, are they? <laughs> One hundred seventy seven yards on the ground for Wofford so far today and Collier wants to take a timeout as it's fourth down fourth that's, and five on the thirty four. That's, that's with one quarter and thirty four seconds left to play. They got a long way to go to get the three hundred and when they don't run for three hundred that they don't usually win. Thirty consecutive wins when they rush for three hundred or more but it is probably not going to happen today because App State has really put the clamps down and they lead thirty five. To 10. Well, last week Appalachian held uh, Georgia Southern until like 257. Georgia Southern was leading the nation in rushing at well over 300 yards. So uh, they're doing an even better job today because Wofford was third in one double A football in rushing prior to today. And App State has allowed just 18.2 points per game, and that's first in the conference. So they do it on both sides of the football. As I mentioned so many times today, it's great team speed that they have. App State's only loss is coming against Kansas on September 10th, 36 to 8 at Kansas. That's yes. a tall order there against the Jayhawks. And then they lost at Furman 34 to 31 on October 8th. And, I, and I've seen Furman. They're pretty good when Engel Martin's playing. And, and then last week they brought in their second string quarterback in the fourth quarter against the Citadel. And he threw for a touchdown, ran for a touchdown, and pulled them out in triple overtime. So. They've lost a couple good football teams. Fourth and five for Wofford. Ball at the 34 of App State. There will be no fakes here, Tom. This is for real. They're going for it. Call your throws. 
And it oh. is incomplete. Incomplete. Well, Mike 17, Andy Mike, Strickland. And Mike Ayers is right on top of this. He, he thinks the, the, he caught the ball inbounds, but I think his feet were out from what I saw live. The replay didn't show it very well. Coach Ayers tried to get his point across the official. They wouldn't have any of it. Besides, there were two of them on the play and only one of Mike, so. Richie Williams comes back out onto the field. I think if they score again one more time is the last we'll see of Richardson or Williams. Just 29 seconds to go in the third quarter. First and 10 from the 34 for App State. Hennessy. It's two or three. That should do it in the third quarter. 19 seconds. And they won't have to run a play as time should expire here in the third walking quarter. Walking to the sideline. 35 to 10, App State in command as we head to the fourth quarter. The Mountaineers dominating the game. 35 to 10 as we head to the final period of play here from Gibbs Stadium on the campus of Wofford College. The final 15 minutes of play from Gibbs Stadium. Wofford trailing App State 35 to 10. The Mountaineers have the ball. Second and eight from their own 37. Richie Williams, number seven, is the quarterback. Flags fly on the play. Williams throws. Hennessy has it. Enough for a first down, but there is a flag on the play. I'm impressed with the Appalachians receivers, how they catch the ball in their hands, don't let the ball come into their body. It's one of the things you teach receivers so the ball doesn't bounce off their shoulder pads or their body. They're catching it out front with their hands. And the guy throwing it, not too bad. He is a Walter Payton Award candidate, which yes, is the, basically the Heisman equivalent in one double A for the best player in the nation. Illegal formation of the offense, the tackle lined up in the backfield. The penalty is five yards from the previous spot. Replay second down. I, I am so glad to see that called. I almost commented a while ago. The offensive lineman's head has to break the waistband of the other lineman from the center out. And if they look, their offensive line's getting more bowed, so they get back deeper so they can get better look at pass protection. And they're not up on the line of scrimmage. Another flag. And intercepted. Oh. Intercepted out of the corner. I think I think it's for not. And into the end zone, but there are flags. We need to sort it out. The old offensive line for App State didn't even move. The uh, head linesman threw the flag. I think Wofford was in the neutral zone. See, so they have a little discussion here whether uh, Appalachian's right tackle moved or not. That's a tough break. Get the official word here. There are two fouls on the play. Offsides, defense, number 63. Personal foul on the offense, 67. Those fouls will offset. Replay, second out. That's a tough call. Years ago, years ago, years ago, they used to have the difference of the penalty walked off. It's a five against a 15. And that's what the fans down here are yelling. How could you negate a five yard penalty with a 15 or vice versa? But because of that, it's now second and 12 from the 32 for App State. Four receivers to the near side. Not calling off the dogs just yet. Complete. Zach Johnson with the catch. You know, they run three of those guys off, and then they throw to one who, who looks like he's loafing, and he hangs back, and, and they, they get five, six yards on it. A tough break for Wofford on that interception. It, it was a score. 
get them back to respectable and have a, an outside chance of making this ball game yet. That brings up third and long for the, for the Mountaineers with 13.44 to go in the ball game. Williams throws. What a oh. catch. Great Hennessy. A one-handed, uh, left-handed grab by Hennessy. I don't know how he made you, it. You got to look at this again, folks. Get up, get back to the chair, and look this, look at this play. Don't go to the kitchen. This is a big-time reception. Oh my goodness! Look at that. <laughs> Funny enough, we've got the App State coaches next door to us. They're all laughing. Yeah. They watch the replay on our monitor and are as bewildered as we are. That's as good a catch as you're going to see at any level of football, any time. Trey Hennessy making the one-yard grab, and he turns it into a first down very close to midfield for App State. You know, when things are going bad for her, they go bad. When things are going good, they go good. William zips it. And that is complete. We got a, I think we got a roughing the passer holding call here. Up. Three is hands. Batishan making the grab. There is a flag on the. It must flight. be against Appalachian. They're walking. A couple guys. Hennessy's walking backwards. Roughing the quarterback. Uh -huh. Defense number 97 with a head-to-head -head contact. 15 yards will be tacked on. Automatic first down. The irony of that, that's the first time they got to Williams today when he's trying to throw. 97 is Josh Dorr called for the infraction and as you said Walt it's really starting to rain and pour down on Wofford and Richie Williams will leave the game to a rousing applause from the fans on the App State side of the football field Richie Williams leaving the football game and and that's a good move on Jerry Moore's part they have some tough games coming up they they're they positioned to win the conference uh, no reason to get him hurt. and You've got a comfortable lead. 249 yards passing for Williams, who comes in. Trey Elder, and he'll run and go inside the 20 and pick up seven or eight on first down. Trey Elder, 6-1-1-90, the sophomore from Duncan, South Carolina. Attempted 17 passes, completed eight, 63 yards, no touchdowns, and two interceptions. For number 15, Trey Elder in the ball game for Richie Williams, who threw for 249 yards. He also ran for a touchdown and had a touchdown throw as well to Daniel Bettis. And he's the heir apparent next year uh, as Williams is a senior. So he needs to get some work, too. And, I, and Jerry, that's a good move. Now, see the left tackle? He's illegal right there. That is an illegal formation. His head is not even with... Elder calls his own number again and gets down inside the 10. First and goal for the Mountaineers. You sure that wasn't Williams? <laughs> I, he's wearing number 15, but I don't know. I'll tell you what, it looked like Williams, just a little different version. Uh, well, he's been watching Williams for so long, you would think he'd absorb some of Williams' moves, even a little bit. Yeah, it looks like Jerry Moore's got himself another quarterback like Williams to back up what he's got this year. It's tough. You got to be. You got to stay with it. Wofford's got to now look at the left tackle. You look at the feet of the guards in the center, and then the the tackles back, where his head's not breaking the waist of the center, and that's what ha is supposed to happen. It looked like yeah. Please. A, looked like please a bunch start of geese. both clocks on my signal. Flying in formation. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like a V formation. That's number 88. Uh, Nick Cardwell. Uh, he's in the backfield. Tight end, Nick Cardwell. Now look where the center is and look where the left tackle is. And the right tackle. Elder still has it. Throws to the end zone, complete. Daniel Bettis, second touchdown catch of the afternoon for Bettis. Well, you know, the people that thought Jerry Moore was being nice not trying to run the score up by bringing in the backup quarterback, I could dispense that thought. Trey Elder, two runs and a touchdown pass for Trey Elder coming into the game for Richie Williams. Not much drop off there. Uh -huh. and, and Trey Elder has a name like he should be in Hollywood or something. That, that's, a, that's a Hollywood name. Right on the money. Extra point is good. Daniel Bettis with his fourth touchdown catch of the season. 
thrown by Trey Elder, just coming into the ball game to replace Richie Williams. 42 to 10, 11.34 to go in this one. Yep. 11.34 to go here in the fourth quarter. App State, 42 to 10 over Wofford. Trey Elder just threw a touchdown pass to Daniel Bettis, his second TD grab of the game. Trey Elder coming in to replace Richie Williams. And App State kicks it away. This is Underwood from the eight. Across the 30 to the 35. And they'll spot it at about the 36. I don't think you're going to see this Wofford team give up. I think they're going to continue to try and play hard. That's been their M.O. with under uh, Mike, so they're not going to quit out there. A lot of fans have left and started to filter out of here, but there's a lot that have stayed. And they're good, loyal fans. As Wofford's been a good football program, and they have nothing to be ashamed of. First down for Wofford. They'll go to the ground. Jackson with the run. The 42 points allowed by Wofford is the most this season. And the most they've allowed at home. They allowed 48 in the loss to Georgia Southern November 24th of 2001. It's been a long time since they've given up this many points. And they don't lose in this building either, but today it's all App State. Michael Gabriel Jackson. Jackson. Yep. They have some good running backs. They, they just don't have uh, the complete passing game that Appalachian has. Third and one from the 45 for Wofford. Unbalanced line with motion to the wide side. Collier, Young, first down at midfield. And the clock will stop. 10-11 to go in the fourth quarter. Wofford's modest two-game winning streak will come to an end against App State this afternoon at Gibbs Stadium. Wofford plays at the Citadel next week, and that should be a good football game. Citadel's playing good defense, and they have a young quarterback uh, playing the last couple of weeks because their starter uh, tore his anterior cruciate three weeks ago. Gallia. What an interception. Another great catch. Cam Spear, uh, number 27, deflected it I to mean, himself and made the grab. I have seen more good catches this afternoon by Appalachian State. He just pulled this in with one hand also. Watch this as he's going down. Uh, it's just not meant to be today for Wofford. Cam Spear from Monroe, North Carolina. What a game he has had. Well, let's see who uh, Jerry Moore sends out here quarterback again. It's, it's still Trey Elder. Elder is a local product from Spartanburg. That's incredible. Played at Burns yeah. High School. Right up the middle, Hennessy, and he barreled over the defenders. Number 10, Brian Ford tried to get in the way of Hennessy and was unsuccessful. Burns High School has one of the best high school programs in the state of South Carolina. Watch this. He just nailed him and ran right over him. Tell you what, Trey Hennessy is getting some time and making the most of it. <laughs> Tell you what, he, Catches, looks pretty, runs. he looks pretty. He reminds me of John Riggins. 6 <laughs> one, 210, and just a freshman from Morgantown, North Carolina. Number 35 to the left of Trey Elder. Doesn't look like he wants to run away from people. He'd rather run them over. He gets the call again. Forges ahead for three or four with 9.21 to go in the ball game. 42 to 10. I think as long as they're on schedule running the ball three, four, five yards at a clip, uh, Coach Moore will keep the ball on the ground. He doesn't like to embarrass anybody. But if they get the third and long, they'll probably throw the ball. App State's record will improve to five and two, three and one in the conference, put them in the top spot of the conference, depending on the outcomes of other games this afternoon. Hennessy 
This time they stop a place to go. The little penetration by the Wofford defense there. James Gunsolin, number 98, made the first hit. There's a lot of clean white shirts on that offensive line right now for Appalachian also. Wofford will drop to four and three this season, two and two in the conference. Appalachian has their second offensive line in the in the game, Tom. Play clock down to five. Elder. Complete. Are they going to call him down or incomplete pass? Incomplete. TJ Corman was the intended receiver. It was a good hit back there to knock that ball out of there. Is that Brian Ford? That, that is Brian Ford. I, I think Brian Ford was a little upset. He's the one who Hennessy ran over <laughs> a few plays ago and Ford said well I'm gonna get, get my licks in now back at him yeah on TJ Corman that's fourth down fourth and seven and I don't see any punt team out there in the 40 yard line no, they'll go for it throw complete Corman had that one. That may have gone wow. through the hands right. of a Wofford defender. I did. It did go through the hand. I'm trying to check the number out here. Number 40. It went through the hands of Seth Goldwire, a freshman. Seth Goldwire went right through his hands. Let's see it right here. Corman between three defenders makes the grab. Threaded the needle and they made great catches. First and 10 from the 11. They can get a first down at the one. Elder the pitch. Hennessy stopped. Five Brian Kemp came up to make the play for Wofford. Well, actually, right now you're seeing the entire Appalachian State second team out on the field. And Caton Bethay is limping off the field and. It may be 42 to 10, but that's never a good sight for Wofford, one of their top defenders on the front lines. He may have been kicked. He, he doesn't look like he turned, twisted anything, and nobody's paying any attention to him down there. So he may just, uh, now we got a trainer walking over to him. Hennessy. Slams into the line. Maybe got one or two. We're going to have third down and about seven here. Or six. The clock continues to tick. Six minutes and 48 seconds away from a victory for App State. Four balanced uh, two wide receivers to the right, to the left. Hennessy's the only back in the backfield besides the quarterback. Look at the disparity in passing yardage 286 to 29 for Wofford. There's the pitch to Hennessy at the five. Dies for the end line. He's down on about it? the no. one yard line. Just Hennessey. shy, just shy. Stumbled down at about the one, and it, it will be good enough for a first down potentially. I tell you, Hennessy could play for a lot of people in the Southern Conference. He looks like a ball player with the attitude you have to have for a big bruising back. He, he doesn't back down at all. Seven rushes for 38 yards for Hennessy, who came into the game only running it 22 times. So he's really making the most of his opportunity today in this lopsided affair. It's a little over five. Years. Easy touchdown uh, in the corner of the end zone. William Mayfield and the second TD throw for Trey Elder. Uh, he, he he didn't come out of the huddle. He just he just lined up out there. And nobody went out there with him. Somebody fell asleep out there in the, that either the outside linebacker or defensive end or somebody. Julian Roush for the extra point. And he connects. 49 to 10 with 549 to go in the ball game. A touchdown grab for William Mayfield and App State is way in front. A future Wofford Terrier watching his team getting beat 49 to 10 here in the fourth quarter.
College football continues next on CSS as the Citadel taking on Georgia Southern right here on CSS. Georgia Southern losing to App State last week. The Citadel went to triple overtime with Furman before losing. And now App State giving Wofford a taste of what they gave to Georgia Southern as we kick it away here with 5.49 to go. Brian Kemp the ball. Oh, now, come on. That's not necessary there. Wrestled out of bounds. <laughs> little exuberance on that tackle. Dominic Dingle, number 21 for App State. Put a little extra on that one. Did you see a flag, Walt? No flag. Did you expect one? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm being honest now. You, you think the refs want to get this one over and well, done with? It could be. I, it was in the crowd there in the, uh, the sidelines. He okay. Didn't really see it. It wasn't vicious. It's just something that didn't have to have to happen. First and ten for Wofford from their own 28. Young, number six. Up the middle. There's Adrian a lot of Young. clean shirts out there on, def on defense right now. Number 13, Michael King on the stop for the Mountaineers. Bring up second down. We mentioned that Richie Williams was a Walter Payton candidate. Well, Marcus Morrell, number 44 on defense for App State, is a Buchanan Award candidate, which is given, given to the, the top defensive player in the nation. And he's tied for fifth nationally in sacks, force fumbles, and tackles for loss. And if that name Morrell sounds familiar, <laughs> his brother Adrian played in the NFL with the Jets, Cards, Skins, and Cowboys. So Morrell comes from good stock. It's, it's a family plan. And the App State defense not backing down at all based on that play. And he didn't have much chance for a sack or something today either because uh, Wofford doesn't throw the ball that much. So, And when they do, they usually throw it off some kind of play action a little bit. I mean, you got nine guys there on, within three yards of the ball. Keep it on the ground for Wofford. Ricky Bunton, number 39, gets the call. Bunton, 6'1", 192, a future star in this Wofford program. Hopefully he's a freshman. I think Wofford substituted a lot of people also at this point. I've been running some different linemen in and out of there, giving them a little experience. Now, why do you have Josh Collier still in the ball game? That's a good question. Uh, I don't know who the backup is, and maybe the maybe the backup hasn't played. And maybe they're redshirting somebody. Uh, that they don't want to give him, get him in the ball game. Great run by Collier to get the first down. They've got two backups, Widmeyer and Romero. Between them, they have four pass attempts this season. Well, the other issue is pride. You, you, you're getting beat, and you don't want to indicate that you've given up by just playing people to play them. And there's a lot of seniors out there. The seniors' parents are here. Um, you know, there's a lot of things to look at as a coach. And I, I, I used to struggle with that at times when we were getting beat uh, uncomfortably, I'll believe it, say, instead of badly. <laughs> so. Pitch is Bunton there. Pitch. Bunton fumbles it and gets it back. The freshman, Ricky Bunton. Oh, yeah. They count that as a forward pass because the pitch was forward. It wasn't backward or it would have been a lateral. Should see him coming out here. I, I believe it's a forward pitch. Yes. That's the quarterback's uh, responsibility to get that ball where it's supposed to be right there. And he wasn't rushed. It was just uh, it might have slipped out of his hand. I hear you. Uh, he's coming out now. He had nobody on this slot back here. Collier keeps across midfield. Past the 40. Collier still on his feet, headed to the end zone, and he wins the race. That's why Collier's in there. All right, it's a matter of pride. You, you know, you don't want to give up. A little option left. And he shows some speed here as well. 58 yard run for Josh Collier and a touchdown for Wofford. 
Yeah, I'm glad to see that in the sense that they didn't quit. They have a lot of pride in the program and, and they're still working. Just over three minutes to go in the game, 49 to 17, as Wofford scores on the legs of Josh Collier. Today's game has been brought to you by Carolina Ford, driving the Carolinas. By bb &T, you can tell we want your business. And by Food Lion, extra low prices. Spartanburg, South Carolina, 3.06 to go in the fourth quarter. App State with a 49-17 lead over Wofford, but Josh Collier just went for 58 yards and a touchdown run to give Wofford a score here in the late going of this game here from Gibbs Stadium. All right, Tom, yesterday I was at Wofford's uh, light practice, and they practiced an onside kick at least five or six times with little pooch kicks over the front five people. Now we'll see if they try that now or whether they squib kick it or whether they kick it deep, but they did work on it yesterday. And I would think if they're going to do it, they're going to do it now, but Appalachian's expecting it as well. Now they're kicking deep. Drilled into the end zone, a touchback. That was out of the end zone in the air. This would hurt on that one. Yeah. Chris Tommy, maybe still thinking about that punt that he shanked because <laughs> he just hammered that kickoff. Tommy had a 10 yard punt earlier in the game, set up great fields, field position for App State. And once App State got that offensive machine rolling, it was tough to stop. Well, they're so balanced. They, they do things so well out of those formations. Trey Elder, the handoff to Hennessy. You take a look at the rushing for App State. Look at, you got Richie Williams with 73. Richardson has 72 with 17 carries. Hennessy, his 10th carry of the game. And Trey Elder's had two runs for 15 yards as well. I thought I saw a can somebody fire a cannon at us. They have one of those machines where they shoot T-shirts out of them. Did you catch uh, the T-shirt? No, uh, they didn't have my size. <laughs> <laughs> Clock can, can, continues to tick. Second down, Hennessy. Doing all the work here in the late going. Time for the player of the game, and guess who? Richie Williams. Hitting Jermaine Little. That was a 62-yard play, and then watch this little touch pass. Daniel Bettis, one of two touchdown catches on the day for Bettis. And watch Williams coming right to the corner of the end zone for a touchdown run. He is the bb and player of the game. Richie Williams, 19 of 26, 249 yards, two touchdowns, and one interception. Only his second of the season. He is the bb and player of the game. <laughs> Hennessy got drilled after. No, that, that was not down. Hennessy. Oh, that, was Hennessy. A, that was a quarterback. Oh, Elder. <laughs> Elder. I was watching Richie Williams. Trey Elder just went back to the comic section on that one. He got hit in the head. I mean, he got stuffed. Yeah, we'll take a listen to this one. Pads popping. Uh, I'll tell you what, you got to get number 10, Brian Ford coming in there. Yeah. And you got to give Wofford credit. They're playing hard. They're still hitting. They're still playing the game like it's supposed to be played. And you know, Mike Harris will not accept anything less than no, that. Right to the final gun. They have too much pride in this program, and, they, and they've been too good. <laughs> there comes another t shirt. Goes, it might be your size. There goes the t shirt <laughs> cannon. Now, that's not Hennessy. I got 138 left, and, and Appalachian looks content to hand the ball off and go home with a 49 to 17 victory here. CJ Underwood got the handoff there. Underwood also working on kickoff returns. I'd be surprised if they ran the, uh, through the football here. One minute, 15 seconds to go in the game. Second and eight from the 35 for App State. Underwood. C.J. Underwood is 5'8", but 205 as a freshman. I don't think uh, Trey Elder's going to keep the ball off of this play. That's what the play has been very successful for him with Williams sticking the ball in the belly and pulling it out now. But I wouldn't risk my backup quarterback running an option right now. Not with just 45 seconds to go. No. This should be 
the last play they have to run in the ball game ahead 49 to 17 improving the record to five and two. Wofford drops to four and three two and two in the conference and App State is headed to the top the log jam they've emerged with a three and one record after the victory over Wofford. Number 90 Brian Blair makes the play on the tackle which will be the final play of the ball game. now the clock stopped according to the officials. And the App State crowd on the other side is making a lot of noise too. And Wofford has called timeout. Well, you know, they might have called timeout to acknowledge the seniors playing in their last game. I mean, people over there, they, they, it's not right. They should not be booing. You know, there, there could be a reason for that. It is senior day, the fifth and final home game of the season for Wofford, who now goes on the road for four games. Wofford, Wofford will have to play at the Citadel, at Western Carolina, at Furman, and then they close the season November 19th at Gardner-Webb. As for App State, to Chattanooga at home next week, 3.30. Then they're at LSU, home against Western Carolina, and finish the season November 19th at Elon. Josh Collier will finish the ball game as the leading rusher for Wofford. 13 carries, 88 yards, and a touchdown. Including that 58-yard scamper here late in the fourth quarter for the second score of the game for Wofford. Well, Appalachian's not going to kick with 16 seconds left. They may just hand it off and they could go run around back there and that's exactly what they're doing. Just killing the clock. LD now, look throws at this. it deep. It's complete. And there it bounce. That was Clay McKnight, a freshman number 81, but that will. That will cause some consternation, I think, in this. How can only one second have gone off the clock? There are 15.2 seconds up on the clock right 16 now. 16.9 seconds. What happened? What, how about the time? One second went off. Clay McKnight, number 81, made the catch. There are 15.2 seconds to go as McKnight went out of bounds. Oh, crazy. And now they're resetting the clock. Yeah, we got Walt. Take it easy. <laughs> I, don't, I want you to be <laughs> around for the end of the ball game with me, okay? I'm talking to this official know, next door in the booth. I forgot I was on the air. <laughs> you, got, you got it right because they're going to reset the clock. Oh, they're going to uh, tick it down to eight seconds, I believe. I thought I was coaching again. I eight forget. seconds. <laughs> it never leaves the blood, Walt. <laughs> I'm yelling at this official yes. in the booth. I, I heard you. I was standing right next to you. I hope my wife didn't get that on tape. Oh, that was great. <laughs> You can't take the coaching out of the coach. Even up in the uh, okay. broadcast booth, you can't do it. You can take the boy out of the country, but yeah. you can't take the country out of the boy. I tell you. So officially 7.8 seconds left. The throw from Elder to McKnight puts the ball down at the nine, first and goal. I don't think and I don't think Jerry Moore will throw the ball down here. I'll tell you, they are in a passing formation. They've got two receivers to the near side. I can't believe he won't take a knee twice and just get it over with. Now they've reset the clock to 10 seconds, and Elder uh, will take a knee and end the ball game. Jerry's got too much class to do the. I mean, he did the right thing. So a bit of a strange ending to this one, but yes. the time runs out, <laughs> and App State will enjoy and celebrate a road on the victory. Not many teams win at this place that's, here at Gibbs Stadium. And especially in October. They don't win much here in October. 49 to 17, the Mountaineers come away with the victory. It was actually 7-7 at one point right. after Wofford had scored a touchdown, but it was all App State after that. Richie Williams getting the job done and Kevin Richardson running in the backfield. And one of the turning points might have been that fourth and four, fourth and five when they went for it when the game was close. 49-17 the final coming up. That's the Citadel against Georgia Southern. Once again, our final score, 49-17. to App State victorious against Wofford. Jared Tall before they vote, you know? That means they got to get up. They need a B-12 shot. I mean, it's a joke, man. And, and you